Okay, folks, here we are tonight for big night for Muskies uh, booster program. We got the cake auction over in the next door to us here. Um, boys JV game is going on right now also. Then to the, here in the main gym, we got the girls against Davenport North Wildcats. They are the second best team in the conference. They come in tonight with an 11-2 conference record. Uh, last time the Muskies played them, it was 44 to 77. Davenport North with the win. The starting lineup tonight for the Muskies will be Avery Schroeder, Riley Seaman, Riley Seaman, Eddie Schilling, Jazzy Jones, and Macy Reno. Starting for Davenport North will be Divine Borage. Mariah Thompson, Journey Houston, Tyra Taylor, and Aria McCorkey. Um, I do see Becca Hope been back on, got the Utah, uh, but she is not starting. So I don't know if she played the other night. Uh, Wait, so that means we're not going to have our halftime guest. Yeah, we're not going to have our halftime guest. What are we going to do? I don't know. I think we might have another special guest that Ooh. might. Ooh. There's a couple of them. There are a couple of them. Um, but we're going to get ready here. They're going to sing the national anthem. No, uh, we're going to get underway. during season athlete you know but I mean kudos to her for doing that and uh, like I said she win one more match and she'll qualify so I'll keep you updated on that as the night goes through getting ready for the tip off Ooh, muskies get the tip Jazzy Jones drives in right away for easy two nicely done there nice tip good Trying to answer back is North. Looks like man-to-man um, -man here. Nope, nope. Or two, three. And a three by number three, Mariah Thompson, senior. The lone senior here for starting for Davenport North. Got a tip pass there. That was off Davenport North. Seaman cutting through the lane there, looks good. Just couldn't quite get the pass to her. Tenacious defense there by 
Davenport North hard to get it in. Zillick. And Reno loses the ball. There's a carry and a travel, and neither one get called. Little Euro step off a knee. Nicely done there by Seaman. Great defense down there. Got her hand on it and went off number one. That's a uh, Borage. Her went off her knee. That's one of their leading scorers. Borage is uh, a sophomore who's got 228 points on the year. Reno for three. Good rebound by Jones there. Back to Reno. Another three. Crashing hard on the boards, picking up. Girls are playing tough. Number three, senior, another three. Wow. That's a second three for Thompson. Nice job, Zillig. Way to go to the ball there. Good job going to the ball. Reno, dribbling in. And the basket. Oh no, they call the travel. No, 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 no. Unbelievable. So Muskie's back in there. Two, three. Definitely making them nothing easy on the perimeter. Travel there. That's another travel, so now we got one back. 6 2 the score. Reno. Another three attempt by Reno. She just can't find it. I don't know if got away with a travel there. Borage for three, short. Rebound, Seaman. We're doing a really good job crashing the board so far. Very impressed with how we're, you know, setting ourselves up underneath and getting good rebounds. And now oh, Zillig cut and Seaman didn't expect her to. This is coast to coast all the way. Number five with the score. We got a quick timeout here by the Muskies. Down eight to two with a little bit over five left in the first quarter. Doing a really good job on crashing the board. We just, you know, Reno's putting up some threes and they're not four, so. The gonna make an appearance. What was that, I'm sorry? Uh, I'm one, I wondered if the band was gonna make an appearance tonight. They're getting set up. Well, you know, Jeff Hyde, you kind of got to worry about him sometimes. <laughs> I would assume they will be for, for the second game? Yeah. So Reno, or no, this is bringing it up the court. Inside to Seaman. Zillig, look at her hustle, getting that rebound. Like, that's what we always call her name for. Travel of the... She's taking that extra step. She's done that twice now. Barrett. Bar I don't know. Not Barrett. That's how I'm going to say it. So Schroeder bringing it up. Zillig talked about a three there for... Good backdoor cut, just got tipped away from Seaman there. Wow. About the pass a little bit late there to the team. And still got it to fall. Look. Freshman. Gosh dang. Yeah, you know, North they're gonna be strong for a while. And I think the biggest thing that we've got to do here is just stay as close. And for as long as we can. Right. 
Zillick picking up a foul there. That's her first. First. The two. Uh, about eight run? No. Yeah, I think an eight point run for. Give or take, yeah. Yeah, for North. I'm going to stop the bleeding here. We need to. She's going to miss this, and we're going to get the rebound. No, okay, I was wrong. My bad. Schroeder bringing the ball up. Oh, great. Right in front of Coach. I got my kid and my coach right in front of us. Perfect. Good ball rotation there. Long three. Another long three. Zillick, no. Just slow down. We don't have the numbers. Schroeder for three. Oh, just short. rotation there and rebounding by good rebounding by boards there from Davenport North. I mean she's just in the right spot there and easy put up for two. I mean they're contesting every pass and you know it's very much like the girls have played all season. There's a lot of hustle there. Right. You can question how much they're putting into this. Just sometimes they're not quite there. Another long three off to the side there by Schroeder. I wonder if that's the plan for tonight is get as many threes as we can. Because we're taking a lot of them. Got the roll there. Seventeenth with a little bit over two minutes left. Quarter. Jazzy. Zillig. Thought about driving. Keep the ball moving, girls. Seaman for three. Good, look at that! Little Reno picks four. Zillig, three. Turn around, turn around! Nineteen to two now. Come on, girls, you can do this. Got him. Body foul on number 15 for Murphy. Picking up the, her first and Devonport North's first foul for the night. Now to a minute 28 left in the first quarter. Schroeder taking a seat. I believe is Green. Yeah, Taylor Green makes an appearance. Jazzy. Kicks it up. There you go. Oh, oh good luck. Quite good at the fall. Three. Good rebound there by Great positioning. Jazzy. Reno three. Off the front right. Following your shot, your rebound. It's amazing how that stuff works. And then she gets it blocked a little bit, but good defense, Zillig. Oh, great defense there by Zillig. But got it taken there by number 13, Taylor. Up 21-2 uh, here, and we're going to end the first quarter. Reno, look at the
The shot is off before the buzz. Number 13 got a hand on it. And so at the end of one, it's 21 to two, Davenport North. So you know your Hustler will stand the test of time. We think the difference is obvious. With our welded fabricated steel deck, high strength 11 gauge one piece frame, and the precision control of our smooth track steering, anyone can mow like a pro. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. Okay folks, we're back. Getting ready for the second quarter. It's no, it'll be Davenport. Oh, we won the top, the tip. That's right. And Jazzy ran down the board. Still running our 2-3 zone on defense here. And they're definitely starting to settle into that 2-3 zone. Understand it a little bit better. You know, you could say, okay, it's 21-2. They're playing a great team. They're playing a really good team. So, I mean, but they understand it, you know, they understand where they're supposed to be, what they're supposed to do. That's the big thing. Ooh, risky pass. Got to meet that, Jazzy. Jazzy's supporting the pink shoes tonight. I like Reno from the corner. Good rebound there by Green. Seaman! Underneath. Come on, D. Keep working, keep working. She traveled. Yep. Just like a little hop, hop, hop. Slow it down, girls. Slow the game down. Work good. Work for a good shot. Don't force it. For two rebound, Jones. Look at that. Look at that. Way to be, Jazzy. Good rebound there, and and you set yourself up for an easy two on the inside like that. Nice. Stop the run for Davenport North. Another three. Oh, she finally missed. Oh, wow. I'm surprised she didn't take that shot. Steal by Green. You got to rip that out of there. It's our ball anyway. And Becca Hogue making an appearance on the floor for Zillig. It's nice to see her back out. Yep. She's had a rough couple of months. Yeah, she has. Oh, good idea. But she kicked it. I, I, I thought she kicked it. Green on the other end picking up the foul. As the shot falls for number 15, McCorky. She don't look like a freshman up here. Going to the line for the end one, McCorky. You can dribble, Jazzy. Reno. Good, good ball rotation there. Just can't get the... Nice job, Seaman. Let me get your hands on that. 
stopping the bleeding <laughs> there. <laughs> yep. What are we going to call there? You know, only at MHS Fieldhouse can you be sitting, minding your own business, broadcasting a basketball game, and have a random one come sit up next to you and just start causing trouble. That's typical. There's a three by number five. That's Houston. So Reno brings it back up, throws it away. Oh, got tipped, thank goodness, by number one. Barrage. Coming back in is uh, Schroeder and Zillig taking a seat as Jazzy Jones and Reno. Seaman thought about a kick. Thought about a long three there. We're going to try to get it over to Becca. Get in there. There we go, Seaman. Nice pass there by Zillig. Step three. Wow. Wow. That's Barrage with the three. Good job, Shro. Ladies and gentlemen, as we come to halftime here, I want you to realize the place is as full as it gets. The number of people that are here for the cake auction, crazy. It's it's a packed house. If, if you know somebody, they're here. I mean, Kim Sears. Right. From Mulberry. Uh, I believe I saw Dr. Wall from Vision Center pop in. Matt from Hy-Vee. Uh, Christmas. Well, there's the Nelson family. Brett Nelson there. And there still is time to get out here for the oh, yeah. cake auction. There'll be uh, some cakes sold during half... Well, of course, there's a silent auction all night. All night. But during halftime of the girls' game, there'll be some cakes live auction in between games and during halftime of the boys' game. Okay. Jamie Schroeder from Schroeder Auctions. Mm -hmm. I think that's what he calls his business. Yeah, I he think it is. He's Jamie Schroeder, Schroeder. and he does. And so yep. if, he ha if he doesn't call it Schroeder Auctions... That's what he should. I'm deeming it. <laughs> um, there yeah. we go. We're deeming it. It's good. He's done it for years. Does a tremendous job. Uh, Sam Paul and some of the other guys are out there helping him all the time. And, you know, I'll tell you this. It's back memories because Jamie Schroeder used to do the announcements. Wow. Way back when. I'm not going to say how far back. Because we don't want to go there. We don't want to go there. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we used to get to work every morning on the Wes and Jamie show. That's crazy. Over to Seaman, who thought about it. Over to Zillig. Come on. Three, three to six. That a turnover. I think you could have called a foul there. Hogue from the corner got tipped. Look at the <laughs> Schroeder. Those are hustle points, that's for sure. Yeah. But again, you know, the tough part here is you've got to be able to turn those hustle points into, into real points. points. Yep. And these guys are just, I mean, all the way around. Zillig picking up her second foul there, team fourth. Well, actually, according to the scoreboard, is first. Oh, you can't walk away from the ball. We got really lucky on that one. Good if she would have been looking to pass, yeah. if she would have been looking to score, that she turned right around, people stepped away, she would have been easy light bucket. up and light up. Got a dribble right here, guys. Tried to get it inside. To 
Schroeder. Coming in now, Jazzy Jones and Reno. The seed is Becca and Zillig. Becca Hogue and Oh, Hag. I'm hey. sorry. My bad. That's all good. There are Hoigs in town, so. Oh, yes. Easy. I'm sure it's not the first time. <laughs> Step back three. Wow. That was a NBA three. Oh, guys. Transition layup on the other end, 9 to 35 with a little bit over two, well, almost three minutes left. Schroeder drives, kicks out. Reno again. Oh, she's dialed now. Keep feeding it. Keep feeding her. You know, Coach Westerkamp and I were talking about this a couple of weeks ago after one of the games. And we were talking about the girls liking to shoot the three. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they just weren't hitting them at the rate you need to to be successful, right? Mm -hmm. And we talked about, you know, the effect of, like, the Steph Curry's, and we've talked right. about this before. exactly. You've been able to hit 30 40% Otherwise, of those three. The math's work. Right. And if you okay, we've started hitting it. We're clawing back just a little yep. bit. Yeah, slowly, yep. That's how it'll work. Exactly. And, you know, we can't give them the three on the like that. Good rebound by Jazz. Way to be there. Pink shoes. <laughs> Seaman for three. Long rebound. Look at Jazzy getting the rebound there. That's just inside the three line. That's probably why she didn't make it. Ugh. Look at Jazz hustling down there. Good hustle by Jazz. She looks taller in those pink shoes. That's what I it like is. I like the light blue shoes that we had Tuesday night. Tuesday night. Yeah. Tuesday night. Step back three there. Good box out there by Green. Great box out. Auto for the cake auction. <laughs> for the cake She's auction. Like moving stuff around our table. Just causing so she can take problems. Some causing problems. Being a headache. So underneath. Minute 44 left till the half. More buckets here. Another three. That one's short. Man. They're moving the ball really well against that, us. And, and that number one girl, I think she needs to, I mean, she's, she's dangerously close to traveling every time she touches the ball. It's Burroughs. Marino. Kind of go meet the ball. Got a minute left on the clock. Looked like Becca was going to make an appearance, but coach decided otherwise. Nice pass. Up. Pass next time. You're fine. Just use the glass. Good, aggressive move. I liked it. Wow. Good ball movement there. On the other end by Denver. We're down to 30 seconds left until halftime. And showing up. I'm getting ready to rock and roll. And folks, as we come into halftime here, kind of the normal thing to tell you is when the band plays, be really careful. We can't be super loud with it because we'll get into Facebook jail for right. copyright violations and all this other fun jibber-jabber. So we'll do our best to give you as much of it as we can. We might, we might have the sound going in and out a little bit. We're going to try and give you as much as we can throughout the cake auction. Uh, just so you know, that's why you won't always hear performance. In the green, good outside move. Step back, Jen. Good rebound. Now take it off. Schroeder. Ah! Four seconds left. Are you kidding me? Are you that, kidding me? That's not what you wanted to go into time with. So, going into the half, 
River Rehab Physical Therapy. Feel better, move forward. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. They're getting ready to wheel out some of the first cakes for the World Booster Club Cake Auction. And that is Mr. Jamie Schroeder. Like we're at three so far, according to Mr. Shoulder. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Five hundred bucks already. No, we're at four fifty. My bad. He's asking for five. Four hundred bucks for the first cake. Let's see who this one went to. Ladies and gentlemen, head to Vision Center PC. Right here. If you can't quite hear him, that was Vision Center PC. Very much. In fact, I got a message from them today. Contacts are in. Woohoo! So I got to get out to Vision Center and get my contacts. I can't do contacts. I, oh, can you? I got glasses. So what's this? Uh, it's a it's a cake. Well, I know that. What kind of cake? Good. Yeah, probably. Believe all the great cake jokes that I'm gonna have all night long. Oh boy. Oh, it looks like a, like it's got the monkey, does it have the, can't really quite tell. Up. Oh, they're spinning it around. Look at the girls go. I can guarantee you, I would not be that talented. I'd probably trip and the cake would probably fall and go all over the floor. Well, if I was out there now, her would completely distract me. I would probably yep. exactly. Find me. Three hundred and fifty dollars for this one.
Jamie Schroeder just making 150 bucks in like 15 minutes. Done. Boom. Just a dude's ass for it. boys fun as well yeah I mean that's making sure everybody here on both sides gets to see it In case you wonder what a full house looks like on the home side, this is it. This is it. This is great. Student sections here is always, again, no up signs. I'm not that impressed. Boom. I'm losing my respect for them. Another $500 cake. For those of you that uh, know your cake auction history, generally speaking, the cakes that make it to the floor are going to be $500 cakes. Rarely do they go for less than that. I think Jamie does a job of everybody else. Right. This looks like it'll... Nope, they got one more up over there. Jimmy Greenhaw and Next Gen Motors. Wow. For those of you who don't know, they are a new dealership on the corner of 61 and 38 in the old Toyota of Muscatine and Uptown Motor location. They did a lot of renovations, uh, new black paint job out there. Very nice. Mr. Schroeder's going up into the Well, Pete's dad. Everybody, it's Pete's dad. Yeah. Also known as Hockey Ball. I think uh, so far the girls pulling this cake in definitely have the winning outfits. Yeah, that's the second pair of gold pants we see. It must be a theme for tonight. Gold pants. Well, I think the purple skirt really sets up and then the yellow necklace to go with it. I mean, it's just putting in more effort. And I'm not sure but that might be an old musky cheer. It looks like outfit it. Outfit from that's I this. That's like circa my age, I think. Somewhere. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It might be a little older than me. It might be more like in the villain age bracket. <laughs> looks like a maybe got that from mom or.
gentlemen, I hope if not, it's significantly more entertaining than you and I talk. Well, that's got to be. $400. Is that C right here? Yeah, CBI. All right, folks, we have about 10 minutes left of halftime, so they'll have their normal halftime stuff Warm now. Ups. So we will break and we'll be back at. These messages from your local sponsor. You know Rivo as expert plumbers, but did you know Rivo can also be your one source for complete bathroom and kitchen remodels? With professional craftsmen doing the job for more than 30 years, experienced in tile, carpentry, and of course plumbing, Rivo can transform a dreary basement into an elegant bathroom. And a good warm kitchen using inspirational design and brands. Before you stand in the big box, call Rivo and Coke here and see how a home town professional can refresh and improve your home. sizes of plumbing needs. Bringing in our heavy equipment to replace cracked gas lines or designing clever piping systems for new construction plumbing. A family-owned company that's reliably honest and remarkably affordable. Right here in Muscatine, all day long, every day of the week. Rivo Incorporated, skill, knowledge, and tools to solve the messiest problems. Did we mention Ladies and gentlemen, we're back. we got about a minute left at halftime. 
Toby, what are your thoughts going into the second half? I mean, it is 43 to 12. It's been a rough half. Right. I think we've got going for us. I would think, you know, if, if we can, you know, the score the same, you know, the difference the same. Let's, let's, let's try to have that for a poll right now and uh, go from there. I like, you know, I like how they're playing. They're playing hard, like always. I mean, we, you know, we, you know, that's something that we've always come to see from the girls. And uh, maybe, maybe, hopefully, some of those threes will start falling for us, and we can chip away a little bit and and go from there. But North North team, uh, and, and I'll credit for that. But I mean, our girls are they're looking. They're laughing over there. They're having fun and. Working hard and good to see. Well, and you know, that's one thing. When you know you're playing a team that is really a great team. Really a great I mean, all they're the way not they're number two in the MAC, I believe, right, right. now. Yep. Mm -hmm. They're not there for no. Exactly. I think uh, I was talking to um, Church earlier today, and they do have all well, the girls that are getting some mid-major type D1 looks. So, I mean, that's that's something right there, you know. I mean, the two sophomores and that are getting some looks from the mid-major D1 schools. When you, you know, you get a school that's got one of those maybe, but when you got two or three, <laughs> I mean, that's pretty tough. Yeah. So here we go. We got a loose ball here, and it looks like it's still Davenport North ball. We got possession arrow towards the Muskies. So meeting of the minds again. Another long three. No body foul there. Try to get it. Oh, nice, Jazzy. Way to use a glass there, too. Really good work inside. It's those shoes, those pink shoes. I love them. Wow. Big Sounds three. about right. Oh, that's our ball if we hustle. That's out of bounds anyway. Oh, here we go. All right. See if we can get four points here to their none. Way, chip away, chip away. Another good inside Ooh, block there by 13. That was a good block by Taylor. Long three by number 15, McCorky. So I got new bifocals there, trying to get used to them. That's that's a whoo, and back to <laughs> go. Gosh darn it. Those transition points hurt. Yeah. Like I said, I mean, I I get the three. Come on, Jazzy. Off just a skosh there. Jazzy getting a little frustrated, I think, with that one. Definitely uh, foul there on Jazzy. So going to the line for two will be number 15, McCorky, freshman. The back end, no, we'll take that. So yeah, the one here that they have in the lineup right now is number three, Maria Thompson. She's the one. 
does make the second. Schroeder it up. Off Becca. They just can test every pass and Oh, Becca got the tip out. Fight for it, kid. Jump ball. Musky ball. Good job fighting for that. Got a substitution there for Davenport North. Schroeder three, in and out, gosh darn it. Oh, she traveled, didn't she? Back the other way, 54-14, a little bit over three minutes, uh, third quarter here. Up the quarter, good, oh, no. We're really nitpicking that tonight. Becca comes up top of the key now. In coming in for Schroeder. Losing the match. Good rebound there by Seaman. Coming in number 33 for the Muskies, that's Isabel Gonzalez. We got a foul there. Or we got a jump ball. Is that what it is? Jump ball? Coming in for Becca. So Becca staying in, so Steven coming out. So the Muskies will bring it in. A little bit over a minute left here in the third quarter. I'm guessing it's still on the floor though. Take that all the way. Oh, great idea. Just couldn't get it to fall. Becca picks up the steal on the other end. North trying to force it. She many crickets. That's off Davenport. North, two girls collided with each other. Down to 12 seconds left here in the third quarter. Three, you know, step back three. That one's going to be short. Off 
Jones. She was in the right spot, just lost the handle on it there for a second. Jeez, crickets. I'm just, this place is packed. So at the end of three, 14 to 56, um, you know, they're, they're, they're definitely fighting hard like normal. Um, they're not giving up. They're, they're putting up some shots. They just aren't falling for them. And it's just one of those nights for them. You know, I mean, so we're going to get ready here to start the fourth quarter. Down 14 to 56. And it should be musky ball, right? Session arrow says it is. So. Yeah, I was going to say, it should be musky ball. So we got Green, Becca, Gonzalez, Reno, and Maynard for the Muskies. Off Maynard there. Looked like it got tipped by North and it kind of went off Maynard's foot. Oh, almost Gonzalez. Gotta come out on her. Off on Becca. I mean, just another body that just collides into, you know, Becca, and then she loses a little bit. Three off the back of the rim. Oh, good pass there. Good rebound. Rebound, girls. It's all right. Her rebound move. Off the side, Maynard had it, picking it up as Marino, trying to force it up, and does pick up the foul, so that's the uh, second team foul for Davenport North. Gonzalez will be bringing it up the court. Hopefully we can get a couple shots off here. Up. Still got their starters in there? Green off Vader. Oh, wow. Outlet pass for transition basketball there. Maynard three off. Rebound there. Green Gonzalez out the hook. Get in there. Ah. Oh, good job, Becca. Good or good. Way to step in front of that pass. Good defense there on the other end. Gonzalez picks it over to Becca. Maynard picks up the loose ball. Reno for three. Off the front of the rim. Gee, many crickets. Lay up on the other end. A good transition there. It's like they release this. Like they have somebody release as soon as the shot's up. You know? And unfortunately, it seems to be working. Yeah, I mean, they it's, as soon as that shot goes, they got at least two girls just releasing down the court the other way. No body foul there. Zillig and Schroeder coming in. Becca is going to take a seat along with Marino. Gets it inside to Schroeder. 
out to Zillick for three. Her first shot of the night doesn't fall. Look at, see, they got it's like they got somebody they, outletted as soon as that shot goes up. Well, you know, and that's the tough thing when a team is set up to run like that, and they feel that they've got the people underneath to be able to get the offensive rebounds and still let or part defensive rebounds and right. still get somebody to cut out. A team that can do that's going to be tough, no matter what no you're matter doing. No matter what you're doing. That was a travel. Down to 340 left on the clock in the fourth quarter here. Silly three. Looked like that got tipped. But it did. Another substitution for Davenport North. Number 24 coming in. Freshman McMath. Green taking a seat, seaming in. Ooh, good job, Schroeder. Stepping in front of the pass. Up to Gonzalez. Might have got a little bit too far under the basket. Got a foul underneath. I thought maybe that could have been a jump ball. Down to 2.42 left with a 65-14 lead for Dab North. The old Wildcats. Another three short for the rim rebound Seaman. Bringing it up. Schroeder drives in. Oh, tried to do a little floater there. Zillick back. Got a little loose ball foul or loose ball action down there. And off on Schroeder, it looks like. Zillick goes out and Green comes back in. Minute 30 left on the clock. Seaman stepping in front of the pass there. Up ahead to Schroeder. Oh, the glass doesn't get it to fall. Maynard goes up, but does pick up the foul. So Maynard will go to the line for two. There you go. Up and in for two. 16 points for the Muskies now. Coming down. To a little bit under a minute left on the clock. To three. <laughs> I don't know what you're going to do about that. Seaman over to Maynard. Gonzalez rotates down. Gets it into green. Goes up. Puts it off the glass. I really like that look there that she got. Schroeder. Tough. Angle rebound, Seaman. Over to Green, who puts it up. <laughs> In and out. You just can't buy a break. It's, it's just rough. Maynard hustling back on the other end. And they'll probably just wind the clock out here. And that'll do it. Muskie's 16. 
Davenport North, 68. We'll take a quick break and then we'll be right back for more cake auction. You know Rivo as expert plumbers, but did you know Rivo can also be your one source for complete bathroom and kitchen remodels? With professional craftsmen doing the job for more than 30 years, experienced in tile, carpentry, and of course plumbing, Rivo can transform a dreary basement into an elegant bathroom and upgrade a worn out kitchen using inspirational design and quality brands. Before you stand in line at a big box store, call Rivo Incorporated and see how a hometown professional can refresh and improve your home. And we're back with a lot of purple and yellow over in the corner, getting ready to come out on the court. Nice little call out for uh, Ron Kaiser. You know, every time I talk about Ron Kaiser on the air, I gotta tell you the story. Of course, he's a longtime biology teacher here. Everybody had him. Everybody, I'd say loved him, but yeah, loved him. Loved him. That's good. And, uh, oh, this has probably been six, seven years ago now. He was playing racquetball with us at the Y in the mornings. Uh -huh. Okay. And you know, this guy's mid 70s or something. Oh my god. He's and he's so good. You know, he's right. Tennis coach. Guy, you put a racket in this guy's hand, I don't care what it is, you hit it. Right. So we're playing. And playing against him. I take my racket back to swing. Uh-huh. He thought I was gonna go for backhand, I spun around the other way, caught my racket. And I caught him right square on the <laughs> nose. <laughs> right in his glasses. And uh, it pushed him back in, and he got this little nick. Oh, right really? Across, right across. He was okay. Mostly. Right. I think it hurt his pride more than anything. Right. But we kept playing. He was, he was good. We came out, and I said, Guys, I've been thinking about this. First of all, of course, I'm sorry. I didn't mean right. to. didn't realize you cut behind me. I said, oh. I just lived out every 10th grade biology kid's <laughs> dream. I'm whacking you in the face. Smacking you right in the face. <laughs> he just looks at me. He mumbled some things that I don't think I should probably say on the air. And then we went on playing some more racket. That is, for me, that is the greatest Ron Kaiser story. I'm sure people have a lot better ones out there. Uh, that's pretty cool. And, and then just last year, we were doing uh, some interviews, uh, some mock interviews for a high school season. Of course he sees me and he puts his hand up to like protect his face. <laughs> We're up in the, in the ballroom in the mirror right? and he's like basically telling everybody that I whacked him in the face. That's the Jerry Queen! Ooh, we have a donated back, folks. That is our first wow. donated back. So, Toby, I know this is uh, your first real full cake auction here. Right. And yep. in this case, what they do is literally just donate it right back. They're going to pay for it once. They put it back out so that they can auction it again, basically yep. double their money on it. That's pretty sweet that they can do that. But, you know, uh, you know and all this money goes back to the school, you know. So come on out, guys, and and uh, support it, you know, and still got time to get a cake, buy one. Absolutely. You know, I mean, we got all night well, here. Well, you know, the fun part about this is you can't just buy one. Right. You got to go in. You got to bid in the silent auction. Right. You got to participate. Maybe you get one, maybe you don't, and, you know, maybe you end up spending more than you planned. Right. But that's how it's supposed to be. Exactly. I mean, it, it goes towards the kids and the community, and, you know, I'm sure it helps with a lot of athletics. It, you know? it is. You know, so uh, almost every program, well, I mean, every program, does receive funds from the Booster Club. Uh -huh. um, they help coordinate the entire athletic department and activities department, needs, which is a, a big, big undertaking. Right. Uh, Jenny Wade 
took over as the president this year, and she is uh, doing a great job. You know, she's she's bringing everything back and kind of trying to recover. And you know, those, those COVID years were tough. Uh, you know, we went a couple years without a cake auction. Last year was the first one back, but and uh, you know, it was it was a little bit lighter cake auction. But it was right. the first one back, so exactly. I didn't kind of anticipate that. But it was exactly. you know in the 25, 30 grand range. I'm not totally positive and you know in the past it could be 40 50 right plus and so you know i think that's kind of what they're hoping for here oh wow we're up to 900 bucks wow Yes, folks, that was $1,000. Wow. Not counting what it went for the first time. Now we're at $1,400. Wow. 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 And they're going back and forth. We got somebody that's really interested in it. Well, and you know, there are obviously a lot of folks that come in with the intention of making a big donation. They pick a cake that's connected to them in some way. Right. And then we are So what are we looking at? What, what did it go for? Was it 18? Uh, I didn't hear the fact. This is a unique cake here. Got the old muscatine bridge there. And Musco lighting. All right. Imagine that. <laughs> Musco donating a bridge, bridge. cake Taking. with lights. <laughs> Pushing fifteen hundred now. <laughs> Brett Nelson did buy that for Musco Power. I know Brett for a long time. You know, there's something to be said for donating the cake and then turning around and buying, and buying it. it. Yep. I don't know what it is about these kids. They're all mugging me as they walk by. by. It's crazy. Oh, look at the little 
Noah Fox. We got a molar. <laughs> You'd think they didn't like come to my house and raid right. my pantry for food. Exactly. Every day. Well, not every day. <laughs> Just every day in the summer. Yeah, okay. Folks, ladies and gentlemen, that is the legendary Sam Paul that just walked by on the screen. Really? Huh. Ag teacher extraordinaire. We actually have a really cool thing we're doing now with uh, FFA. Uh huh. Uh, Margaret. Stawell, Herbert, sorry. Okay. I can never remember her maiden name. Right. Ex she's always going to be Herbert to me. So the FFA kids are writing for the Discover Muscatine newspaper. Oh. As they go through the year, uh, the treasurer, the secretary, the, um, the other leaders are all kind of, I think it's taking turns. Right. Documenting what they're doing. Okay. And sharing it through, it actually, I believe, goes through the MHS Auroran, which is the Auroran Today, pardon me. That's the newspaper, quote unquote, right. version. You know, we all know the Auroran is the yearbook, Correct. but the Auroran Today is the newspaper function. And we've partnered with them to bring that in and share it with the whole community through Discover Muscatine. That's cool. So yeah, that was that was fun. So Sam, Sam was pretty instrumental in helping get that going. Good. That's something neat for the kids there. I mean, uh, maybe you got a future journalist there or something. Well, and what I like about this is we're helping teach the kids, you know, because we're, we're here quite a bit, right. obviously. Like, I was here just this week working with the Muskie Minutes kids on their video announcements and all that stuff. Right. You know, the the successor to the Wes and Jamie show way back, back when. when. Okay. And... The Aurora Today also does some video stuff, and they're learning this multimedia concept of being able to take one piece of information and share it across multiple channels, channels. because not everybody consumes media the same way anymore. Right. You know? Correct. There's folks that want to see it in print and show up in their mailbox. There's some that want to get it on their phone. Oh. There's some that want to you know, watch it on TV, whatever it right. is. And, you know, obviously that's always been Discover Muscatine's goal. Right. Is to be able to get you the local information Mission. in whatever way you're comfortable with. Right. And it's great to see the kids still see value in things that aren't always digital. Right. You know, digital's great. Right. Don't get me wrong. Right. But, I mean, it, it, Grandma and Grandpa still want to read the paper, you know. And, yeah. You know, well, even I enjoy reading the paper. So. Well, and here's what I'll say. When was the last time you cut a picture out of your phone and hung it on your refrigerator? Exactly. Never. Never. And that's what we always try and think of Discuss Muscatine as is refrigerator news. Right. You know, what what's going on in the community that's worthy of going on somebody's refrigerator? Right. Whether it's basketball, football, FFA... Band. It could be so many different things that are, like you say, you put on the fridge. Once again, Carter Dillon hanging out in front of my camera. That's perfect, right? And Parker Schweitzer. <laughs> hey, Parker Schweitzer, down in front. Hey, Schweitzer. Schweitzer. <laughs> he wasn't impressed. He, he, he was like, okay. Now, I don't know why. He always loves it when I hop into video calls. Right. You know, because they're all playing games, and there's like five or six of them on there. And I'm the dad who right. just walks in and starts being obnoxious. It's, it's entertaining. They and like I'm going to bet there's plenty of people out there listening right now that are like, yeah, that Chris Anderson, he can do obnoxious. <laughs> Another three-layer cake here. Wow, we got like one, two. Looks like they got two more out there. Careful. Oh, I think that's the best spin. That is the best spin. Oh, what do we have here? Wow.
We're at seven on this one. We're up to a grand again. Holy moly. That's crazy. sudden it feels like holy moly holy moly there it is oh, now am i rob riggle or joe tessitore i would say rob i would lean towards rob <laughs> i think you are right okay what's up son hey where'd parker schweitzer go So we had one coming out, but they sent it back. Must've it must have needed more stuff. Yeah, or maybe it jumped line or something. All right, this is perfect. Can I steal your headset for a second? Yeah, sure. All right, so Parker Schweitzer and Wyatt Anderson are here with me right now. And actually Carter Dillon is too. Parker, I need you to put those headphones on for a second. You'll be able to hear me. Okay, okay now, Carter, Parker, Wyatt. I want you to all hear this. All the folks out in Muscatine can hear this. Okay, you're live. Okay. Okay, this is your last chance. Become a Michigan Wolverine fan. No. You can do it. The Bears are it good. only takes six letters. G-O-B-L-U-E. You can do it right the now. Bears Here's your chance terrible. to publicly declare yourself for the Wolverines. We live in Iowa, so no. Okay, fair enough. How you been, Parker? Good. Good. What do you think of the uh, cake auction here? It's boring. It's boring? What are you talking about? I can't even hear it. Well, that's because you guys are running around in the back. They've raised like several thousand dollars. There's cakes that lights out. What? What are you doing? I mean, half of these, I don't know, have come from your dad's store. I don't think you'd want to tell him this is boring, would you? I don't care. 
Matt, if you're listening, I'm sorry your son is not supporting you. Carter, would you like to say anything to the folks in Muscatine? No, no. Justin Fields is good. Justin Fields is good. He is the consummate Bears fan, folks. Wyatt, would you like to say anything to the folks in Muscatine? Go Niners. Go Niners. Oh. Go Niners. All right, Parker, thanks for showing up with us. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the quality entertainment you can only get in Muscatine, Iowa. Well, and the kids, they're just, they're a riot. I mean, they're fun at that age, you know, and they're not, the, you know, king know-it-alls yet. <laughs> they kind of probably are, but, you know, they're not, they're not, uh, they're still willing to listen a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I think we got gold, we got a gold skirt, we got gold pants. Now we're getting ready. Wait till you see this next cake coming up. Somebody spent a lot of time on this next cake. Another one similar to the one that Musco donated with uh, bridge and lights. And Chamber of Commerce donated this cake. Wait. It. Oh, okay. Hey, nice to meet you. You guys do a great job. Thank you. Here, hop, hop on. Hop on. No, get on here. Get on here. We have Coach Torelli's dad here with us, and he is going to put a headset on. How are you, sir? I, I'm fantastic. How are you? <laughs> By the way, I'm Chris Anderson. Hi, Chris. I, I'm the obnoxious homer on the broadcast. Oh, we love you guys. We think you guys do a great job. And uh, I, I was going to give you my boys' phone number so you could call them because they're at home watching the game tonight. And I said, I'm going to put you guys on the spot. That would, you guys are live. So. That would be awesome. You know, I'll tell you, um, Luke and I have talked a lot over the last two years or so. You know, my son plays basketball coming up through the lower levels and like next level basketball and stuff like that and what I love about what Hello, Luke's doing Hello, is, is oops, I did not mean to cut commercial there folks what I love about what he's doing is he is paying attention to the lower levels Absolutely. and he's working on building a program and that's what we need we do we're really proud of it we came through a program like that we started with the lower levels I mean, he's seen uh, you know, from Lake Forest community how that's worked, and I think he's trying to you know, be a team. I'm really proud of what's going on. But just this year, watching the development of the team from early in the season, you know, the diehard fans, and we're homers like you, but uh, the kids, I think, have really, uh, I mean, especially that last game, they were hitting on all cylinders, and we hope it uh, shows up tonight as well. Yeah, you know, the one thing I love, and you said this, you know, this team is a spread out age-wise, and that can be tough, you know, because you have some seniors that are have been committed for a long time. You've got some young players coming up and ready to play, and sometimes that doesn't go well, but it seems like they're really starting to kind of gel around each other a little bit, and again, what I love is they're all getting great playing time, and they all hustle all the time. I don't care. When they're on that court, Holy cow, there's no question what they're going to be doing. They're yeah. hustling. And, and we were talking the other night. I, what's their record? 4-9? Is that their current record? Four, what was that? 4-9. They played 13 games, I believe, so far. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we were saying maybe two or three games. They really maybe weren't in from the beginning. They kind of got off to a, a cold start. Yep. But, but of maybe six or seven of the losses, they've been in every game. They're very, they're very, very competitive. Some of the games, you know, the first quarter, second quarter, they haven't shot well, but they always hustle, they always play defense, they always rebound. So they th do. It, 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 it's been fun to watch. It is, and that's you know, that's something we haven't always done. You know, this is. There was a period of time where not that the kids weren't trying, but I don't think they 
gotten that culture of like what it's going to take to win. And, you know, I think they're starting to get it. Because, you know, there were a couple years there that were rough after Joe left, right? And to see Luke come in and, you know, obviously you're not going to be able to, you know, win everything right away. Yeah. But they get those wins, and you can see them. Like, I remember, gosh, I don't remember what game it was last year, but they won a game here at home. The students rushed the floor, and everybody's having a blast. They're, they all care about musky basketball again. And that's what it takes. Yeah, it's nice. And just to look around and see the stand. <laughs> I, I've never been here for the, for the cake game. And so it just turned out, it looked at my schedule I was showing up tonight, and I was like, this is unbelievable. So it is. Uh, we're sitting with Luke's wife and, and his in-law, so that's a lot of fun. Behind the bench. And it uh, should be a very exciting game. Yeah, so. Well, thanks for stopping up. Oh, I really thank you, appreciate thank you. it. I, I love, I, I don't know, I think it was another one of your sons that was like, uh, chatting with us on uh, YouTube uh, in yes. the comments and stuff and oh my goodness it's great yeah. um, and again you know that's what I love about doing this is you know, we can all just have fun with it you know I mean? yeah, we're professional you know we're not going to do anything crazy and we're going to give you the best broadcast we can but you know what my goodness this is high school basketball we should be having fun and, and you guys are and we, and we appreciate it so I didn't want to say hi but we really had to get in touch with Luke's brothers I didn't know you were going to put the headset on me but hey, thank you very you much you know what and you know what we'll do maybe we could because like I can bring several of them into the broadcast all at once so no matter where they are I can send them all links and they can all come in and they can help me commentate yeah, I don't know if you want that <laughs> <laughs> Paul and Peter will uh, be entertaining for sure. so <laughs> nice meeting you guys. yes That's nice great. thank you very much you, it was Sean. a pleasure thank you Couple. One brought a thousand, the robotic one. They had the little uh, demonstration there with the ro robot shooting the baskets. This one here is a high V one. Is that Furby? Yep, um, Furby. Guys, I feel like that part of the really failing. <laughs> <laughs> that was an absolutely amazing, unplanned drop. -in. Yes. I mean, to have Coach's dad here and and uh, stop in and, you know, say hi. And well, and, you know, I love that he's excited about what his son's doing. You right. Know, you know? Exactly. Ah. Another $1,000 cake there. The old Furby. You know, Furbies were never a thing for me. No, me neither. So there are some silent auction cakes in there also. Absolutely. There is a cafeteria full of, of silent auction silent cakes. Auction cakes. Autumn, do you have any idea how many cakes are in there in the Salvation or, or in the silent auction? How many cakes? Idea how many cakes are in there? Um, total cakes. There are 78 total cakes. 78 total cakes. Uh -huh. Too that's, many Christmas. Yeah, that's impressive. And if you figure each one averages maybe like $800, you know, it's probably what about the average is going to be. I would think at least. I, yeah, five, five to eight probably. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, again, it's going to be a great night for the fundraising programs or fundraising for the programs of the booster club right you know and all the sports all the activities are going to be a part of the funds that come in tonight so okay so we got about 14 minutes yet before the boys tip off so we're going to take a break here for a little bit um, I'm going to go ahead and leave the scoreboard up as we rotate through some commercials so you guys can see about how long it is till um, tip off and then we'll be back shortly.
You know Rivo as expert plumbers, but did you know Rivo can also be your one source for complete bathroom and kitchen remodels? With professional craftsmen doing the job for more than 30 years, experienced in tile, carpentry, and of course plumbing, Rivo can transform a dreary basement into an elegant bathroom and upgrade a worn out kitchen using inspirational design and quality brands. Before you stand in line at a big box store, call Rivo Incorporated and see how a hometown professional can refresh and improve your home. River Rehab Physical Therapy. Feel better, move forward. The Hustler Turf quality matters, especially in the strength and durability of our motors. So you know your Hustler will stand the test of time. We think the difference is obvious. With our welded fabricated steel deck, high... Employing experienced plumbers and carpenters, we specialize in remodeling entire bathrooms and kitchens. Imagine the possibilities. Stylish new faucets, sinks, shower units, bathtubs, and more, along with tankless water heaters and gas fireplaces. We also provide complete residential and commercial plumbing services. Revo Incorporated. Call us for your next remodel. <laughs> From a clogged toilet to a complete sewer line replacement, Rivo is a modern plumbing company designed to respond quickly to all shapes and sizes of plumbing needs. Bringing in our heavy equipment to replace cracked gas lines or designing clever piping systems for new construction plumbing, a family-owned company that's reliably honest and remarkably affordable. Right here in Muscatine, all day long, every day of the week, Rivo Incorporated, skill, knowledge, and tools to solve the messiest problems. Did we mention quality matters? Welcome to our cut policy. Let's take a closer look. Our mowers provide superior laser precision cut quality for a perfectly manicured lawn. Let's break this down in science terms. This grass is cut good. This grass is cut not as good. Hustler turf. Mow like a pro. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. You know Rivo as expert plumbers, but did you know Rivo can also be your one source for complete bathroom and kitchen remodels? With professional craftsmen doing the job for more than 30 years, experienced in tile, carpentry, and of course plumbing, Rivo can transform a dreary basement into an elegant bathroom and upgrade a worn out kitchen using inspirational design and quality brands. Before you stand in line at a big box store, call Rivo Incorporated and see how a hometown professional can refresh and improve your home. River Rehab Physical Therapy. Feel better, move forward. At Hustler Turf, quality matters, especially in the strength and durability of our mowers. So you know your Hustler will stand the test of time. We think the difference is obvious. With our welded fabricated steel deck, high strength 11 gauge one piece frame, and the precision control of our smooth track steering, anyone can mow like a pro. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. Rivo, the plumbing experts for Muscatine and surrounding areas has moved. Our new location at 1109 Grandview Avenue offers spacious parking and a large open showroom. Employing experienced plumbers and carpenters, we specialize in remodeling entire bathrooms and kitchens. Imagine the possibilities. Stylish new faucets, sinks, shower units, bathtubs, and more, along with tankless water heaters and gas fireplaces. We also provide complete residential and commercial plumbing services. Rivo Incorporated, call us for your next remodel. 
From a clogged toilet to a complete sewer line replacement, Rivo is a modern plumbing company designed to respond quickly to all shapes and sizes of plumbing needs. Bringing in our heavy equipment to replace cracked gas lines or designing clever piping systems for new construction plumbing, a family-owned company that's reliably honest and remarkably affordable. Right here in Muscatine, all day long, every day of the week, Rivo Incorporated, skill, knowledge, and tools to solve the messiest problems. Did we mention quality matters? Welcome to our cut policy. Let's take a closer look. Our mowers provide superior laser precision cut quality for a perfectly manicured lawn. Let's break this down in science terms. This grass is cut good. This grass is cut not as good. Hustler turf. Mow like a pro. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. You know Rivo as expert plumbers, but did you know Rivo can also be your one source for complete bathroom and kitchen remodels? With professional craftsmen doing the job for more than 30 years, experienced in tile, carpentry, and of course plumbing, Rivo can transform a dreary basement into an elegant bathroom and upgrade a worn out kitchen using inspirational design and quality brands. Before you stand in line at a big box store, call Rivo Incorporated and see how a hometown professional can refresh and improve your home. to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. Rivo, the plumbing experts for Muscatine and surrounding areas has moved. Our new location at 1109 Grandview Avenue offers spacious parking and a large open showroom. Employing experienced plumbers and carpenters, we specialize in remodeling entire bathrooms and kitchens. Imagine the possibilities. Stylish new faucets, sinks, shower units, bathtubs, and more, along with tankless water heaters and gas fireplaces. We also provide complete residential and commercial plumbing services. Rivo Incorporated, call us for your next remodel. From a clogged toilet to a complete sewer line replacement, Rivo is a modern plumbing company designed to respond quickly to all shapes and sizes of plumbing needs. Bringing in our heavy equipment to replace cracked gas lines or designing clever piping systems for new construction plumbing, a family-owned company that's reliably honest and remarkably affordable. Right here in Muscatine, all day long, every day of the week, Rivo Incorporated skill, knowledge, and tools to solve right, the messiest problems. Did Very special interview matters? as we wait for the game calls. to start. Let's take a closer look. I have Kinnick. Our mowers yeah. provide some Big house. laser precision cut <laughs> So ladies and gentlemen, I got Let's break this down one of the other stars of the this fifth grade next level like musky basketball good. team. Where are you guys playing this Muscle weekend? Turf. Mow like a pro. I don't know. Stop in to Muscatine hey, Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see us. You're playing tomorrow and you have no idea where you're playing. Williamsburg, that's right. How many games are you playing? At least three, right? Yeah, maybe four. All right. You, you gonna do some damage, Big House? Yeah. And it's Kinnick, not Big House. Kinnick or Big House? Mm. Kinnick. Kinnick. Are yeah. you sure? Yeah. I I think it sounds like Big House though. No. Uh -uh. no, but see, like if Kinnick's your name, <laughs> your nickname should be Big House, right? Like, isn't that how that should work? No. No. The nice thing is, you can't stop. <laughs> All right, see you tomorrow, bud. See ya. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I will say this also. If you have any other kids or fun folks that might want to step in on the broadcast for a guest segment, send them on up.
some Muscatine people. I do know some. I was talking to Brett Nelson there for a little bit, uh, giving him a hard time about buying his cake back. And, uh, <laughs> I was like, oh, it must be nice to be able to buy your own cake back. He said, yeah, it's something that we like to do. And I said, you know, I appreciate it. And uh, I think the school appreciates it. But we got to talk a little softball there. And we got to know how he and my daughter was doing with the grip and stuff like that. And then I was out in the, out in the, um, out by the cafeteria there, and I ran into the Moss family and uh, talking to about Riley a little bit and softball. She She's uh, doing really good. Um, she had a really good fall. Um, when we played them, I think she was like two for four, I think, and made a pretty nice play on the left field out there. It would be hard for her to get in front of Clostrum out in center, but I think if she plays, I think she proved that she's got a spot in left field there. So there's nothing, you know, I mean, you're playing in Iowa, you know, and they're whatever, 28 deep, which I just can't wrap my head around, but <laughs> it is what it is there. <laughs> I mean, you, we'll go to some of those games, and those Power 5 teams, they got 28, 30 girls on their team, and I'm just like, why? What's the point, you know? <laughs> you're, you're, you're not going to get to see the field half of those girls. Because you can. <laughs> but, you know, more power to them, and... Uh, I, and Riley is doing really good up there, and and I uh, having fun and nice family, very nice family. I love both families, Nelson's and Moss's families. I have known them for years now. Like I say, softball wise, you know, I mean that's where I get to know a lot of these families. So we're going through the starting lineups here for the Muskies. Darnell Thompson coming out. Darnell Thompson starting tonight. Tommy Gray. Oh. So starting tonight for the Muskies. It looks like they're going to have number three, Dar Darnell Thompson. Number five, Diamond Cray. Number 11, Ralph Hopper. Number 15, Luke Wieskamp. And number 23, Michael Henderson. And for Davenport North Wildcats, they're going to have number two, Trayvon Conley. Number 14, Nolan Moser. Number 21, Dennison Franklin. Number 23, Elijah Hinton. And number 24, Roderick Tannemore. Hopefully the Muskies can keep the momentum rolling from the last time we called their game on Tuesday night. Yeah, you know, and I think uh, the Muskies just faked everybody in the crowd out. Half of them were standing up getting ready for the mm -hmm. national, national anthem. anthem. Well, we already did it. Some of them weren't paying attention, Clay Dillon. Yeah. So we're getting ready to do the jump here. It'll be Wies Camp jumping for the Muskies. And number 21. No, that's not number 21, is it? Is that number? Yeah, 21. 21 for, and it was Franklin. And the jump does go to the Muskies. Good ball rotation right out of the gate. Pass inside, Henderson puts it up, uses a glass, nicely done inside. Good ball rotation to get that one extra pass in to get Henderson open down low. Outside, got to get that rebound now. Good job, Wieskamp, good heads up there. No, three, don't do it. Oh, Henderson for three, off the back. 
Good look. I don't mind that three there because no, that was know, a good look. They moved the ball around. Yep, it was a good look. He didn't have anybody in his face. They weren't breaking down, and it was a nice shot. Yep. But Henderson can hit that shot. Yes, he can. Still no Emmer. He's over there in uh, street clothes. He's got that nice jacket on again. Rotation out. No. Number 21 making a three. Dennison Franklin, senior. Coming out with a three-quarter press now is the, are the Wildcats. You know, I'd imagine after watching, you know, and getting some information on the Muskies, they're probably going to try and just put a little bit of pressure on them throughout just to kind of keep that, you know, frustration function. Oh, that. blocking foul there by Henderson. I, that's... I would have rather of them just said no call there. I could see that being called either way, but that's a Henderson picking up his first, the team's first. We're six minutes left in the first quarter, so we're about two minutes in. 3-2 lead for the Wildcats. So we're having a Thompson needing to tuck his jersey in. Second one up and good. So it's a 4 2 game now. So we got a rebound, went out of bounds, I think, off Wieskamp. Wildcats bringing it up. Good defense there by uh, Thompson. Three short, rebound, Henderson. We need a bucket here. Wieskamp. Underneath the Wies camp tries to put it up. Tough shot down there. Good rebound. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Don't foul nope, him. Nope. Yeah. Don't foul him. Just let him take that one. That one's just got to give that one to him. Regroup and recover. Yep. You know, I'd like to see him move through this defense, keep rolling through. Three off the back. There. Maybe try a dribble penetration off yep. of that, see if we can get him to kind of break down a little bit. Yep. And be patient, because it's going to take patience to break down this defense. Slow the game down a little bit. Well, you know, the interesting thing about, like, slowing the game down or picking the pace up, it's kind of amazing how if you're trying to pick the pace up, it's got to be in your pace. Right. Now, if you're the one controlling the fast pace, that's one thing because the game's moving at your speed. Right. And it's not so much always about fast, slow, but are you the ones dictating what's what going want. on? Yeah. Oh, these camps open for a three. Get in there. Look at that. Good hustle there by Hodges. Luis Camp gets blocked, but they do call a foul there, which is the right call. He he at first he did get all ball, but when he came down, he got his arm. So And that's all because of the offensive rebound. Right. Great positioning, 
Great job there. You know, I'm sure there's some statistics on this, and I, I'm going to make some up. But the team that gets the most offensive rebounds, more often than not, is going to win. Exactly. You know, you can do the percentages and you can do the math all day long, but ultimately, the more chances you get, the more points per possession you can average, the better position you're going to be in. Exactly. Help him, help him, help him. Foul on the other end by number three, Thompson. Playing good, aggressive defense and just caught the arm there. Seven to three lead here for Davenport North. We need a rebound right here, guys. Oh. Tips. Hodges. Oh. Good pump fake there on the other end, but the basket does not fall for him. Rebound. Muskies. Up ahead, Deweys Camp drives in. No foul that time, and we got a jump ball situation. That'll go to Davenport North. I think, you know, just like we were talking about for the Muskies, you know, the flip side happens when you're on the north side of the court. They've got to prevent those offensive rebounds. Yes, exactly. We just had, what, three chances there that we could have prevented? Potentially. Three on the corner. Oh, boy. Number 15, that's Chris Moss for the North, picking up that press again. Weiss Camp 3, off the back of the rim. Good look. Really good look. And we pick up a foul on the other end by Cray, I believe. Actually, I thought it looked like he was calling a travel, wasn't it? Gonna be our ball. Ladies and gentlemen, there is the student section. Amazing student section. They have right been now. a tremendous support for both the boys and girls teams all season so far. But again, they are missing their stop sign tonight. Yes, surprisingly. Basket there, nicely done. Five to ten. Need a need a couple. Then we got a body foul there on number three Thompson. I like the aggressiveness. I like that half court pickup full defense. But you just got to be careful with it. Exactly. We got two minutes left in the first quarter. We're already at four fouls. That's not we, good. You no, know, we got to be able to be, you know, if you, if you were at four fouls and you were ahead because you were stopping the defense, it might be okay. But right. you're going to have to kind of pull that back just a little bit. I mean, you know, you can't say we don't want to be aggressive because obviously right. you got five points to make up, but you got to be smart aggressive. Well, now we got a full court press on. Don't get caught in the corner. There you go. Hodges in for two. It was a great press break. Yep. Just get the ball in the center and a lot of good things happen. Yep. Another foul on number 11, Hopper. I believe that's his second or is that his third? It 
That's his first. That's his first. Okay, good. Oh, it's Thompson that's got the fouls. That's right. Yeah, Thompson's got the fouls. First one up and good. Second one up. Short rebound. Craig and gets the foul from number 15 on the other end to kind of even the fouls out a little bit. Three to five now. And once again, we got the full court press. To the end, uh, Hopper back over to the big bad Henderson. Telegraph that pass a little bit, but fortunately got back to him. Got Lopez in there now. Hodges kicks it out. Stolen there. Good block by Henderson on the other end. Nice. That was amazing transition defense by Mr. Henderson. Wonderful defense. 7 to 11 here with a minute 17 left. Side. Darn it. Luis Camp brings it up the court. I just pull up Jay for two. Making it nine to thirteen, just under a minute left here. Out of bounds there off Davenport North. You know, for the way this first quarter has gone, only being down by four with the ball right now right. is it's actually a good place to be. Exactly. You know, the shot clock to gain clock off by, you know, maybe half a second. So this could be the last possession of the quarter if we're playing correctly. Right. And if we get even just a two-pointer here. We'd be within two. Right. With, and, you know, and we've got a foul underneath there on number 21. Fouling Bettis. Underneath, picking up the team's fourth for Davenport North. East Camp 3, ooh, just missed it. Now you just want to make sure that you don't let them get a shot off. Somebody stop the ball. Mm, good. That works. Down by four at the end of the first quarter. Nine to 13, the Wildcats do have a small lead. We'll step away for a quick break and we'll be right back. Stuart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. 
Rivo, the plumbing experts for Muscatine and surrounding areas, has moved. Our new location at 1109 Grandview Avenue offers spacious parking and a large open showroom. Employing experienced plumbers and carpenters, we specialize in remodeling entire bathrooms and kitchens. Imagine the possibilities. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back. Back for the second quarter here. gentlemen it is cake auction night there are people in my family walking back into this place with cake and ice cream and did not bring me and any. didn't bring any for us that's just crazy we have a rule at our house if you go to Dairy Queen you pick up for everybody exactly yeah. buy them books send them to school and this is what you get yep ding 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 Big three to start the second quarter there for North. Gosh darn it. Hodges. Hodges fade away. Wow. That was about as pretty as it Wow. Gets. That one I'm gonna do a wow, say it backwards, wow. Ooh, nice! Good Followed up by a Wies Camp steal and yep. we're heading back up the court. Nice. Good work defensively. Nice to see Lopez bring the ball back up. Ooh, Lopez was open there for a second underneath. Ooh, Lopez! The little guy underneath. Did you see how quick he got that up and released it yeah, out? Yeah, that was. I don't think that could have been much further than like his eyebrows before he got his <laughs> wrist flick because he knew he had to get it out of there. Quick. Nice job by Lopez there underneath, making it 13 to 16. Back to a three-point game again. Luis Camp underneath, good defense, and then Bettis with a foul. <laughs> And that's, that's tough. I mean, you got the guy sandwiched. Yep. And he still gets a basket off. Not much you can do there. So I'm going to the line, number 15, Chris Moss for the Wildcats. does make the second. In the cray, who gets it blocked. Nice though, look at that. He doesn't give up on the play and he almost picks up the steal. But if nothing else, that's a hustle play. play. It's a frustration play. If yep. you can get a handful more of those, it's going to pay add off. Cray, Reese Camp had the rebound but got knocked away. Look at little Lopez. Look at that. Reese Camp for three. Get in there. Yes, there that's huge. Those are all hustle points right yep, there. Yep, exactly. Lopez with a steal. Little feed to Reese Camp for three. Nicely done. And you know, the thing that you'll see here is now they're going to pick up their defense. It's just natural. Yep. When you get that going, you've got more energy. You're flying high. You're getting lower. You're moving your feet more. Wow. And then they hit a crazy three-point shot. Mosier for three. Big bruiser of a guy. Didn't think he was going to make that. 
Ooh. Oh. Lay up on the other end. Good no foul there by Craig. Don't give him that three-point play. Need to get a bucket here. Lopez three, get in there. Yes! Big three. Help, 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 help. Good hustle back on defense too by Lopez, stopping the, taking away the baseline there. 14 up, he's feeling it right now, Moser is. He's, that's three in a row for him. 26-19, a little bit over three minutes left here. You know, and the tough part here is you can't match him. Yeah, and Hodges drives in but picks up the foul before the basket. That is number five, five on the Wildcats. So it's six to five in the team fouls. So Hodges and Wieskamp take a break. Henderson thought about the three there for a second, but. What, what's the foul here? Looks like he had a push. Push on number 23. 23. That's Hitton. That's his second, the team's sixth. Henderson gets it in. Nice. Good pass to Thompson underneath. Good little back door there, kind of. You know, he did a good job of uh, recovering himself to be able to get that shot up. Yeah. Lopez hustling over. Long three missed by Mosier, but they're kind of a weird sequence there on the rebound. And 28-21. Charge. Uh, uh, you know. I think if he doesn't throw his elbow, I think he's okay, but it looked like he kind of threw his elbow a little bit. We might have to go to the replay that I don't have ready. Yeah, that's a seventh foul for the Muskies. So it should. Seventh team foul. That is the third on Thompson. Timeout, Davenport North with 2.43 left in the second quarter. It's 28 to 21. Davenport North with the lead. A little TV timeout here. So we got, oh, we got the girls cheerleaders throwing some t-shirts out. Come down here a little bit further. Come down here a little bit further. Student section gets them all. They, uh, they've been doing that uh, all season, actually. Yeah. I will say this, uh, our new athletic director on the council has been doing a great job of working on making the in-game experience for the crowd. crowd. Up, taking it up a notch, I yes. guess I should say. Yeah. You know, what does it cost to get some t-shirts and toss them out to the kids? Right, but, exactly. You know, they've had knockout, no, oh, excuse me, knockout tournaments. They've had, yep. oh, geez, I don't even know what all they've had to win stuff. And it, they're just having fun, engaging the kids. Exactly. And that's, you can't ask for anything more from the athletic director. No. Activities director. Pardon. Yes. Oh, we skimp. Oh. 
It's a nice psychological win there. Yep. Makes them think a little bit about that pass next time. Good Sorry job. for the little scoreboard, mal scoreboard malfunction there, folks. And better you uh, knock the camera for the OCR off. So we got a score, uh, shot clock violation there by Davenport North. Great defense there by the Muskies. You know, I think that's the first one I've seen this year. I believe so. Hodges picks it up. Well, you know, I suppose technically it's the first one I've ever seen with high school. True. Wieskamp drives in, kicks out, Henderson, make that. Uh, good job rebounding there. For those Takes of you. Nice rebound by Hopper and in for two. For those of you watching at home, this is actually the first year that the Iowa High School Association has implemented a shot clock for both boys and girls basketball. A foul. A foul. Well, I mean, he did fall down. Come good, on. Good acting job. And now he's going to go to the line for three. Give him an Oscar. Number two, Connie, going to the score, going to the free throw line. Up, good. So third one here, chance for a three-point free throw. Third one up and good. So that's a three point play there, 31 23. Gets it into Hopper. Down to a minute 42 left. Three, get in there. Look at Wieskamp going after the rebound. Cray with the rebound picks up the foul there on. I believe that is Mosier picking up the foul and go to the line now for a one-on-one. -on -one. Seventh team foul there for the Wildcats. Rebound, Wieskamp, great rebound. He walked. Yep, he walked. Took an extra step there. Minute 28 left, 31-23. We need to stop here. We need to stop. Can't let this game get away here. Good steal. Great steal. Great job there by Hopper. Great job by Hopper. Great defense into an easy transition bucket. No, that was off. Good rebound, Wieskamp. Good control. Yep. You know, this is one of those where if you can take a little bit of momentum into the half. Take it in. Wieskamp thought about a three. Gets it back out to Hodges over to Henderson. Inside, Cray. Get in there. Oh! Great look. Just couldn't get it to fall. See, that's one thing guys sometimes get a little bit frustrated when they don't get a shot to fall, but look at the defense on the other end by Craig. No, Hodges picks up a foul. Going to the line now for two will be Mosier. Got seven points on the night, leading score for the Wildcats. Senior, so leading for Muskies is Hodges with eight, in and out on the first one. Okay, be ready for a rebound here, guys. <laughs> 26 seconds left on the clock here. Second one does fall. 32-25, out to Harrison. Get somebody in the middle here. Gets the ball to Hodges with 13 seconds left. We 
really spreading the floor here. Six seconds left. Over to Hodges. Three needs to go. Oh, good try there by Henderson to flick it back up in there before the half. Right now it's a Wildcats 32, your Muskies 25 at the half. Let's get ready for some more. Uh, Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. Rivo, the plumbing experts from Muscatine and surrounding areas has moved. Our new location at 1109 Grandview Avenue offers spacious parking in a large open showroom. Employing experienced plumbers and carpenters, we specialize in remodeling entire bathrooms and kitchens. Imagine the possibilities. Stylish new faucets, sinks, shower units, bathtubs, and more, along with tankless water heaters and gas fireplaces. We also provide complete residential and commercial plumbing services. Rivo Incorporated, call us for your next remodel. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back during halftime of the Muskie Davenport North game. The Muskies are currently down 32 to 25. We've got an extra long halftime here because as you all know, it's cake auction night. So while the cake auction is going on and Mr. Jamie Schroeder's out there helping raise money for the Muskie Boosters, I have a very special guest up in the box tonight. I guess it's not really a box, I mean, it's really just a table. Yeah. Um, oh, does anybody recognize that voice? Do we have any guesses? Uh, Let's see, it is the one and only Ryan Timmerman. You know, I'm not sure people would recognize the voice. More words uh, on paper. Uh, but, uh, I don't know. It's a pretty distinctive voice you've got, Mr. Timmerman. Uh, uh, sure. Sure. I'll take it. So for those of you that don't know, Ryan's been covering local sports for about four, four or five years now? Four years. Four years. Uh, and... Uh, He's got some big changes coming up, but uh, a lot of exciting stuff, I think. Uh, he and I had a chance to have a couple of good conversations over the last couple of days. And, um, I think those of you that have gotten used to having comprehensive musky sports, comprehensive, you know, West Liberty, Wilton, I think that's still going to be out there for us. What do you think, Ryan? Yeah, um, definitely, uh, you know, um, going to stick around the area for a while. Won't be at the journal anymore, but... Um, the what? Know, it, the what? The, 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 there's a paper in town or something. Uh, uh, journal. Uh, yeah, we'll, okay. we'll, whatever. We, we'll, uh, okay. we'll, we, we can skip that past that, but, but yeah, going to be uh, going to be sticking around the area for, for a while yet, and um, uh, trying to kind of piece together and recreate what I was doing um, in my prior life. Uh, so... Um, so it'll it'll kind of never be the same, but at the same time, uh, we'll try to we'll try to keep some some coverage going, and um, and, and I'll do what I can going forward, and um, at least kind of um, short term stick around until the end of the school year, and then see what kind of happens uh, until then, if not after that. Yeah, you know, and I think you and I had a good conversation about you know local sports in this area. You know, if you're within 10 miles of where we sit right now, 10 to 12 miles, you're going to care about the Muskies. You're going to care about l &M, You're going to care about West Liberty. Even if you don't have a kid there, you'd like to see those schools do well because, you know, like for West Liberty and those guys, for us, we don't play them, right? So, right. I mean, it's not like they're rivals. They're not, you know, like competition. They're our neighbors, right? No, no. And, you know, that's the one thing. You've done a great job over the years of you're everywhere. <laughs> I mean, like, I think I'm everywhere. You're really everywhere. <laughs> like, I'm everywhere for the Muskies. Yeah. You're everywhere for everyone. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I do what I can and, and just try to make it to uh, as my, many things as I can. Um, it, uh, it, it is pretty rewarding to kind of go around and, and see, uh, see different teams, different kids, different coaches and stuff like that. But... Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll see what we can do going forward at least and, um, and kind of continue what we started. Yeah, that's awesome. And you know, uh, huh. <laughs> I, just, I just got a text from our announcer, uh, Roland Glenbine, yep. uh, who's uh, making sure that we uh, pronounce number two on Norse name correctly. So, <laughs> okay. Uh, 
<laughs> Nothing like rolling piping in. You know, I would have never imagined. <laughs> so what do you think of the first half here so far? Uh, you know, hanging in it. Um, I, I kind of thought it would be it would be fairly close game here for the boys. And, um, and, and you know, they... Uh, I think they have another level or two to get to, and, and they have been a second-half team. They've they've won on second-half runs throughout the the first half of the season, or up until now, anyway. And um, and so maybe that'll continue. Um, they kind of pride themselves on on being able to make some halftime adjustments and, and play well in the second half. So it's it's definitely a, a, a margin that can be made up here in the second half. And and you know, just looking like. Uh, you know, Luke, uh, Luke Wieskamp, one of their leading scorers coming in, he's at, at four points. Um, uh, you know, they, they, have, they, they haven't really gotten going, but they've hung in it, and, and that's, that's a sign of good teams when, when you can kind of piece it together and still give yourself a chance. Yeah, and that's, you know, something uh, Toby and I were talking about is, you know, these kids always play hard, yep. and you can tell they've done their conditioning. Yep. Because they are a second-half team. They have been all year. And one thing that we often talk about is, like, putting yourself in a position to have a chance to win the game. Yep. You know, you can't always win a game in the third quarter, right? I mean, yep. yes, now, granted, Tuesday, yes, they won the game by third quarter. But that doesn't happen often enough. Right. You know, right. you're, you know, Clinton's obviously Clinton this year. You know, they're having a rough patch. But these guys... You know, even in some of the early games, before they all started gelling a little bit, they still were, you know, almost always within a couple of possessions mm -hmm. right down to the end of the game, and they're playing their hearts out every night. I mean, they leave it on the court, there's no question. Yep, yep, they um, definitely, and some of it kind of even has to do with only having whatever their varsity roster is, 10, 11 kids, they've, they've moved some kids up back and forth, but... They really don't get breaks in, ha in practice because they'll scrimmage and it takes everybody to scrimmage. Um, and, and, and they have kids that kind of play AAU all, all year round and, and are active and everything. And and, um, and and it just, you know, whether whether the wins are there or not, the, the product has improved so much over the last year or so um, since, since uh, Coach Torelli has taken over. It's just, it's so much cleaner, and, and they just keep giving themselves chances. It might not even, it might not always go their way, but, but they're in it. Well, and you know, Coach Trella's dad stopped up and chatted with me a little bit yep. uh, in between games, I think it was. And, you know, the one thing that, that I complimented him and his son on, essentially, is the, that program building function, yep. right? You know, there's always these transition years, and, you know, after... Joe Wieskamp left. Yep. You know, we had a couple of years where it was kind of rough, and we were trying to figure out what Muskie basketball was again. Yep. You know, yep. and you know that's that's absolutely nothing against Joe. That's a huge compliment because you know we were able to focus on him, and, and hopefully, you know, he feels that the Muskies helped him become who he is. Right. Yep. And uh, but now we've got to kind of reload a little bit. And, yep. you know, I've mentioned this before, obviously, you know, you don't generally get to listen to the broadcast because you were doing some other thing during the yeah. games. I don't know why. Yeah. But one of the things I talk about is Coach Torelli and some of the others in, like, the Next Level Basketball program, the Brandon Walsh's, the Terrence Watsons, and, and all those guys are building the kids up from a very young level. And yep. they're playing correctly. You know, when my 11-year-old knows who Spencer Lloyd is, and is getting coached by him, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like at the camps and stuff, you know, that's going to be good for the Muskies in the long run. Yep. Yep. And the girls are kind of it's going through that now with, um, I've talked to Coach Westercamp before in our past conversations where um, she is very committed to getting the program steered in the right direction at the, at the youth level. And it's, it's super hard to, as, especially as a first year coach, um, it's sort of weird. It, it's, it's really hard to to win like on, on multiple timelines and she wants to win for the long term and and um you know so maybe the wins aren't there this year but but she is committed to to setting this program up on the girls side to to for for long-term success and that requires a lot of attention to the junior high level and fr freshmen and, and grade school level and um and, and it helps that she's like a gym teacher that kind of bounces back and forth between schools She's, yes. very, she's familiar with the kids at, at a young age, and um, and so I, I think the future is bright for, for the girls' side, 
be because of that. And, and so um, the, bo the boys team uh, might be a little ahead of, uh, ahead of that timeline, but, but at the same time, they're, they're, they have went through the growing pains yes. and, and are kind of coming out the other side. I, I completely agree. And, you know, Coach Westerkamp actually spent a couple of hours down in my office this summer shortly after she got here because she is uh, she is a teacher at Wyatt School. She's his yep. gym teacher. And, you know, she was like, well, what, what can I do? You know, like, what can we do to build the program? You know, what do we need? And I, I'm saying, like, that's what we need. You tell mm -hmm. us, right? Like, mm -hmm. I mean, we all have ideas, but, you know, this program is now going to take on your personality, right? Mm -hmm. And it's got to be, you know, we'll have ideas on what we can get you and, you know, what we can do and how we can help recruit more girls and stuff. But you tell us what you want this program to look like. Yep. And then we'll help you get there. Yep. Um, because the last thing we want is her to not have her fingerprints on this. You know, and I think she's absolutely doing a great job bringing in Ruben and Cruz, I think was a, a yep. big, yep. big win for her. You know, she is young, which I love, you know, but when you're a young coach, you do have some struggles, mm -hmm. right? You know, mm -hmm. what do I want my teams to look like? How do I want to build my program? She has an idea, but it's like, okay, which intermediate step do I need to take to get there? Ruben and Cruz can help with that. They've been yeah. there. Yep. You know, and Cruz, I mean, geez, I don't even know how many teams he coaches, but he's got a couple of girls' teams. I know he was at uh, he was at Van Heck last night when Wyatt's team got done practicing. He was there with the girls. I think it was the seventh grade girls, maybe. So yep. he, they're all going to have a relationship with with the entire team all the way up. So that's great. Yep, yep. And I even like uh, I don't know when it was this past winter or something. Um, I, I don't do I don't go to too many of the like AAU stuff or club stuff. But uh, I had a niece that played down in, in Davenport at, at some club stuff from, she was down with her team from Wisconsin, and it got to like the championship round of volleyball, the, it was volleyball, and it got to kind of late in the day, championship round, and I, I looked around this, um, at the, the Betplex there, and it was like every court was, the, for the championship game, every court was navy blue versus red, meaning Pleasant Valley versus North Scott. And so once, once you establish that winning program at the varsity level, then then it carries down, and, and then it's not easy by any means, but it, it uh, the program itself sets the standard, and, and kids challenge themselves to live up to that. You're absolutely correct. And you know, we would be remiss, obviously, everybody's been able to be watching the cake auction here. This cake is special. Ryan, do you need a new pair of shoes? Uh, if, I, have too, need... I have too many shoes as it is. He does, folks. Uh, I will tell you that. I've seen it. But uh, are those Air Force Ones? Uh, I believe so. Uh, maybe. It looks like some special purple and gold. Guys, i got to apologize. We're watching this on a really small screen from the broadcast. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure that's what they are. Air Force Ones or Jordan Ones? They might be Jordan Ones. I think they might be. I think you might be right. You know, I might have to zoom in here. I'll bet we can find out, folks. Oops. That was not me, folks. I did not accidentally cut the commercial during the broadcast. <laughs> that was not me. That was 100% Timmerman. You yeah. know, he's a newspaper guy. Yeah. Get him up here uh, by the electronics. You get me around, you know, you know, yeah, I was pressing buttons there. And, but, yeah, I believe those are Jordan ones. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. Is that $1,000, I believe, Mr. Schroeder just said? Not a bad cake uh, No. Cake auction. Yep, definitely Jordan's. Now that I get a good look in. Oh, yeah. And I'm like looking through computers and tripods and. <laughs> <laughs> Those uh, Jordans would look good next to my other 35 pairs of shoes or whatever I own. Do you need a grill? If you need a grill, Ooh. the next cake is for you. Um. Oh, geez. And, and this is a guy and a girl. I'm pretty sure. Now, don't quote me on this, folks. I, I am not a cake auction history major, but I do know this is not, I'm 95% sure, I guess I should say, this is not the first time that Guy in a Grill has donated a grill with a cake to try and up the dollars for the cake. I don't even think I could fit that grill in my apartment. Well, I, I don't think 
grills are supposed to go inside apartment well, terrain? No, right, but like just si size-wise, even, even hypothetically if I wanted to, um, it, 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 I don't think it would fit. Now, here's something that I would have never thought of. Light on your grill. Yeah. You know, it should be on wheels. I mean, it's the, it only comes with two wheels, but these girls have got a great idea. They put it on four wheels. Yep. I yep. mean... Could turn that into an RV, just snuggle up and live inside it and I think what make you do food. Is, I think I've got a grill like this. I could put four wheels under it. I could <laughs> let Melissa ride around on it on our deck. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Maybe call down to the guys at Chamberlain and see if they can rig something up like that for me. Ladies and gentlemen, the great thing is the stands are still full. Yes, they are. And, and there's still a lot of cake and ice cream walking in. Still a lot of cake and ice cream walking in, and none has made it to the broadcast booth. <laughs> Apparently, people don't fear me as much as they used to. <laughs> uh, well, Get the you know, guy cake, he gets hangry. Well, I, you have less competition these days, so maybe. <laughs> Maybe people are, uh, maybe people are, uh, you know, getting lazy with, uh, you know, they just figured out. I don't know about that. So, you know, I, I will say this. One of the things, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to tip my hat on something. You know, Ryan and I have been talking and, you know, I think we've kind of, kind of in principle come to some ideas on uh, maybe something that will bring in to help us out at Discover Muscatine a little bit. Yep, yep, um, yeah, kind of. Like I said, um, kind of have the short-term plan and long-term plan, and, uh, and he's so, grinning. He's grinning. So uh, yeah, gonna gonna dabble in some stuff, and, yeah. and you never know where I might pop up. Well, and you know, I think that is the one nice thing about this area. You know, West Liberty has a great paper. Wilton has a great paper. Uh, the Wilton Grand Advocate, and you know, I, I'd like to think people think we're we're a pretty good drag. Um, you know, I think between all of us. And, you know, there's some online options as well. And yep. I think we can all kind of, like, justify having a Ryan Timmerman in the community, you know? Because I do think you are a big, uh, a big bonus for the community because, you know, it, it takes a special person to be able to follow high school sports and be able to pull it all in so that the average person who can't be at every game and every event across every sport can really feel like they're a part of what's going on at the high schools. Yep, yep. And uh, I don't know. I, I, it, it always kind of um, uh, was a, a little bit of a, a surprise or, or just kind of a, a funny, funny experience for me because even 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 guys, uh, you know, families that would go to games. Uh, I'd interview their kids afterwards, and I could just kind of sense the parents circling around, taking pictures of their kids being interviewed. Because even that's kind of a cool process for the kids, and and they kind of enjoy it. Uh, hopefully, I've gotten to the point where it's not quite as awkward and, and uh, uh, clunky as it used to be. I think I've gotten a little better at it, but but uh, yeah, so at least some of the kids kind of kind of enjoy the process and, and being a part of kind of the the media gathering of all of this and being a part of written stories or video or whatever else. So um, so that's always great when the kids can kind of embrace it. It, it is, you know, uh, Becca Hegg, who's been injured for yep. You know, yep. quite a while, you know, she'd come up during halftime and talk with us just a little bit about, yep. you know, what the team's been doing, what they're going to be trying to do, how she's, you know, coming along on the recovery. You know, I will say this as much as I enjoy talking with her. I'm glad to see her back out on the court. Yep. I did notice she had quite a bit of ice on her shoulder after the game, yep. but uh, yeah, she, yeah. I first time I interviewed her was uh, uh, she was freshman. Um, it was regional final uh, softball team when they beat City High to go to state, and and there, there's there's certain kids that I've interviewed where they start out as kind of shy freshmen. And then you can kind of watch them grow throughout the years, and and there get to be a point where there was a, there there would be like one interview where I just think to myself while they were talking like okay they get it now, but but even going back to that that when I interviewed Becca as a freshman, she has seemed like an adult since she's been uh, a freshman like 
like some sometimes I go back and listen to interviews, and the kids seem way more adult than I do. So uh, <laughs> so that's always that that's always a bonus. I could see that. I could totally see that. <laughs> Oh, but, you know, and I'll say this, and I, I think I can speak for you in this, and I know Toby and some of the others of us, even Joel Cross, our at the radio station, we all absolutely love doing this. You know, yep. I mean, it's it's a blast. You know, do we make mistakes? Of course we all do. You know, do we, do we give up nights at home? We do, but our families know we love this. And, you know, just to see the kids enjoy it and get a little bit of something out of it, it's it's a blast. You know? Yep, yep, for sure. And I I do consider myself lucky to be able to do this. Yeah, yeah definitely. So, thoughts on the second half? What do you think? Uh, well, as we talked about, I, I, Muskies are kind of a second half team, so uh, I definitely think um, they'll they'll pull pull it closer here in the opening for opening minutes of the the third quarter here. Um, it is a pretty crucial uh, time here, these first couple minutes of the third quarter because North will either pull away further or Muscatine will get closer. And, and so it's a, it is a really uh, crucial time. So um, we'll kind of watch to see how the opening couple minutes go and, uh, and kind of go from there because that could, that could maybe set the tone for, for the rest of the second half. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it's all about, like we, we did talk about briefly, you know, early on in that extremely long halftime, uh, it, it's about putting yourself in a position to have the opportunity to win the game. Yep, yep. And, you know, right now, down seven points, it's a couple possessions. You know, you got to be within probably two possessions coming into the last couple minutes of the game. And then you're there. Yep, uh, yep. You know, because, again, we've got the shooters we can put a couple of threes down in you know 15 seconds we can score six points no problem yep. you know quick shot turnover shot so we've just got to put ourselves in the position where we can do that yep well ryan thanks a lot yep. for stepping up greatly appreciate it yep looking we'll, forward to seeing everything that you're going to keep we'll doing in, in the touch. community yep and uh we'll take a quick break folks and we'll be right back for second half action on the discover Muscatine sports network Laser precision cut for a perfectly manicured lawn. Let's break this down in science terms. This grass is cut good. This grass is cut not as good. Hustler turf. Mow like a pro. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. Rivo, the plumbing experts from Muscatine and surrounding areas, has moved. Our new location at 1109 Grandview Avenue offers spacious parking and a large open showroom. Employing experienced plumbers and carpenters, we specialize in remodeling entire bathrooms and kitchens. Imagine the possibilities. Stylish new faucets, sinks, shower units, bathtubs, and more, along with tankless water heaters and gas fireplaces. We also provide complete residential and commercial plumbing services. Rivo Incorporated, calls for your next remodel. I'm back. It's on commercial. It is, it is on. With a welded fabricated steel deck. Ladies and gentlemen, you may have just heard Becca Hag popping in over the commercials. I apologize. It, no, it's still there. You'll be able to go back and look at it. Oh yeah. No, I didn't. I cut back to the game. Oh. oh Would you like said. to say anything to the folks in Muscatine here? Pop, pop on. Thanks for joining tonight. Um, cake auction, making a lot of money for the high schoolers here. Um, I'm glad you're joining, but I'm just saying the atmosphere is better if you're here. <laughs> Definitely. Oh, it's healed. Released. Fully released. Yep, fully released. Yep. Good to go. Yep. See you during softball season. Yeah. Well, we got, you know, you got some playing time tonight, so that was good. Yeah. Um, knocking the rust off, I suppose. Air ball. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. It happens, you know. I mean, you haven't played basketball for how long? Basically a year, right? Over a year, yeah. actually. Yeah. So, I mean, you're going to have some rust and, and uh, yeah. definitely, so... I mean, it was a rough game back play down Port North. I mean, they're, one of the best I mean, teams in the conference. They're they're second place in the conference. They were 11 and two coming into tonight. Um, 
and, you know, they're place in the state. Yeah. So, I mean, they're they're legit. I mean, they got and they're young. That's what surprised me. Is, Four D one athletes. Yeah. So they're an insane basketball team. And, and they're they're gonna they're not going anywhere. I nope. mean, because the, they're all young and yeah. and uh, definitely something that. Mark my word, they will win state within the next two years. Really. Mark my word. Wow. That's a pretty bold statement right there. Mark my word. Becca knows, so. I mean, they're only sophomores, and they have a really good incoming eighth grade class. Really? Yep. Wow. And like I said, they're only going to get better, so within a year or two, they could easily do it. Now, they're a 5A school, correct? Correct. Yeah, okay. Because some of the conference schools are like 4A or, you know, like yeah. North Scott, and, of course, Assumption is 3A, but... You know they're they're in a different league of their own there, so yeah. But I just I don't know all the classifications for everybody sometimes, and yep. Well, I'll give it back to Chris. I know he's missing right. broadcasting. Yeah, he's missing. I it. think he should pay me for doing this, though. To be honest. Ooh. What was that? Ooh. She's feisty. She's feisty. She is. She is. Okay, we're getting ready to start the second half here. It'll be Davenport North ball. Muskie's trailing 25 to 32. Need to come out of the gate here and get a stop. Nice, good work there. Great work by Crady underneath. Kind of hold his ground. Again, like Ryan said during halftime, these first couple minutes are going to be critical for the Muskies to break into that seven point lead. You know, they kind of cut into a little bit at the end of the half. Yep. You know, we had the steal and breakaway. Um, I think if we can get within, you know, four or five points here within the next couple minutes, I think we'll be looking pretty good. Thompson picks up his third foul on, I don't know what, but. Apparently it was some sort of illegal touching, it seems like. Yeah, whoa, <laughs> long three. Good job by Hodges there. Hustling to get the rebound. Oh, go get it, Weiss. And see, that's one thing. You know, you get a turnover, but we're not giving up. You know, we, we're, we're double teaming there. A lot of good work there. Great block by Henderson on the other end. Cray back to Weiss Camp for two. Good transition basketball there. Thought maybe he waited a little bit too long for the pass, but it ended up working out. Well, you know, it was tough. They were actually playing some pretty good transition defense. Yeah. And, you know, getting back deep enough that even as the guy started cutting to the hoop, he really didn't have an open guy. Yep. Ooh, Lopez, little crossover floater. Ah. Nice move there by Lopez. Little crossover, just couldn't get the floater to fall. Oh. Is I calling that a gold? 10? No, it was a foul is what they're calling, but uh, you know, that's one of those that you got to wonder if you can get a couple of fouls like that where you're definitely physically dominating them right. and the shot makes them think about over. that it, the next time does. they go up. I know it would me. You know, I'll never forget playing basketball at the Y over noon one day, uh, you know, running into Tim Martin. And, I, and what I mean by that is literally running, running into, into Tim him. Martin <laughs> and falling back on my butt. I didn't do that anymore. Yeah, no. We're not 20 anymore. Good rebound there by Well, that, that was 20 Hodges. years ago, so I was probably yeah. about 20 when that happened. But Kind of pushed that one there a little bit, hoping for a foul and didn't get it. Didn't work on the other end. Little Euro up ahead to Wies Camp. Nothing there, nothing there. Kick it back out. Over to Henderson. Got to push before the shot. Yep. Is that on number 14? Please be. Yep, that's his second foul. Leading scorer for Davenport North. So get him in foul trouble. Get them all in foul trouble. There you go. Wies camp for three. Great rebound there by Hodges. Got to help him out, though. Inside the Cray. 
Back out to Wieskamp. Inside nice to Hodges. Fight. Nice feed. Oh, couldn't quite get the ball to fall. And it does get a crossover there by nicely done. Good defense by Cray not giving up and kind of forcing the senior there, Moser, to step over the line while going after the ball. North is pronounced. Okay. Henderson thought about a three there. Inside to Hodges. Oh, Get the roll. Nice. And the foul. Nice. Chance for a three-point play here. <clears throat> you know, no, this is the point where we were just talking about. You're at a four-point right. deficit. You get this one in here. It's a one-possession game. Fall. Ah. Cray couldn't get the roll there. Don't let him shoot that. Long shot. Okay, let him shoot that. Get in there. Henderson with a nice little move to the basket. Picking up the foul. He'll go to the line for two. Third team foul there by... Uh, The Wildcats. Henderson first one up and good. Making it 30 to 33. Second one up and good. Two point game now. And I love, help, help, the help, help. love the energy they're making them use just to get the ball to court. Oh, big three there. Big three. 36-31. Don't force a shot here, guys. Work for a good look. Three on the corner. Good rebound there by Henderson. Great positioning. Gives it to Wieskamp. Got numbers down on the other end. Wieskamp up for a little pull up J. 33 to 36. Way to fight over that screen. Another corner three. Off the rim. Rebound Cray. Careful, 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 careful. To Wieskamp. Blocking foul. I would say let that go. That's a third on Mosier. Team's fourth. God, I wish you would have let that go and then we could have got the bucket there. Made it a one point game. Henderson out. Weiss camp three. Yes! Gets the roll! Tied up. 36 is. That's definitely a home rim roll there. <laughs> yep. <laughs> You know, one thing Ryan and I were talking about during the cake auction was how much of a second-half team these guys really are. Yeah, they really are a second-half team. Wieskamp, great outlet. And brings it home with the dunk. Timeout, Davenport North. Wieskamp brings it home with a dunk. Giving the Muskies a 38-36 lead. Timeout by North. Wow. Because they're going to have to calm down this musky crowd. Because if they keep going like this, those guys are going to have so much energy, it's not even going to be believable. 
phenomenal little run there, six point run to take the lead. So be Davenport North underneath the basket here. Or no, they'll be at half. They should be under the basket. We just scored, right? Yeah. I was wondering why there wasn't anybody down here. Muskie's looking to set up a half court pickup. Three. Off the bank board, so that'll definitely be ours. Now North picking up their full court press again. Henderson. Great rebound by Cray. Great rebound. Make this. Make this. Make it. Gosh darn it. That would have been huge. Oh, good pass. Tying it back up at 38. Drive on him, Henderson. You can drive on him. Ooh, East Camp got it stolen away there. That's short. How did he get the roll on that? I, it seems like he got a home court roll. Yeah. I, I don't know. And Torelli wants to kind of call a timeout here, recoup, recover. See if he can kind of make sure that they put this back in the box that they want them in. Yeah, because we definitely don't want to give up. You know, don't let them go on a run. After we had all that momentum, we don't want them to go on a run. With a minute 49 left in the third quarter. Muskie's trail by three. Did we get a JV uh, sophomore score? Did we know how the sophomore team did? I did not see one, though. No. Okay. 24. Six, three is what I heard. Is that if I, if I heard that right? That'll help go towards the new facilities. Here to Hodges. Get it across. Wees camp three. That one was long. Push off by Hodges there. Picking up his second, I believe. Yep, second foul there for Hodges. Another three, short, rebound Luis Camp. Get in there. Great rebound there by Cray, putting it up. He's got a knack for being in the right spot all the time. He does a really good job of getting rebounds, offensively or defensively. Almost got a steal there. Number two, putting it in. 
Coney. Oh, go all the way with that. Little finger roll, couldn't get it to fall. Yeah, he did a good job stepping away from the charge. Yep. Just couldn't quite finish it. 43-40 with 30 seconds left. Possible three. Ouch. Ouch. Right back to that six-point number. Yep. No more shot clock for this. Hopefully is the last possession here. Turnover there. So at the end of the third quarter, it's going to be a six-point difference here and a really good game so far. We'll take a quick break and be right back to bring you the fourth quarter. You know Ribo as expert plumbers, but did you know Ribo can also be your one source for complete bathroom and kitchen remodels? With professional craftsmen doing the job for more than 30 years, experienced in tile, carpentry, and of course plumbing, Ribo can transform a dreary basement into an elegant bathroom and upgrade a worn-out kitchen using inspirational design and quality brands. Before you stand in line at a big box store, call Ribo Incorporated and see how a hometown professional can refresh and improve your home. From a clogged toilet to a complete sewer line replacement, Ribo is a modern plumbing company designed to respond quickly to all shapes and sizes of plumbing needs. Bringing in our heavy equipment to replace cracked gas lines or designing clever piping systems for new construction plumbing, a family-owned company that's reliably honest and remarkably affordable. Right here in Muscatine, all day long, every day of the week, Ribo incorporated skill, knowledge, and tools to solve the messiest problems. And we're back for the fourth quarter action on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network as the Muskies trail 46 to 40. Yeah, I think uh, I think we're okay here. Uh, you know, we just need to get some points here out of the very important minute and a half here, two minutes uh, for the Muskies. Inbounds there to Hopper. Hopper into Cray. Great look. Great look inside. Big that's bucket. That's exactly what we needed coming out yep. of the timeout. Big bucket. Nice rebound there by Wieskamp on the missed shot. Henderson all the way, the other way. That's four unanswered. It's getting us right back where we need to be. It's a long possession game again. How about another defensive stand right here? Got a blocking foul on Henderson. Ticky tacky foul there. Ooh, almost got the steal there. And he does lose the ball. Great defense there by Cray to force the turnover. Luis Camp draws the foul. Good job driving and drawing the crowd. You know, I think this is one of those times where it's going to be easier to say this from up here. I'll qualify this from the beginning. But I think if they can work on getting the ball in 
and bang around underneath a little bit. Right. Maybe draw another one or two fouls, get you into the one and one but that'll also free those shots up on the, uh, by the three-point line Correct. for your shooters. So tie game now, 46s. Because we can hang with them inside. Yeah. And number three drives right down there, Coney. Coney. Henderson. Nice stutter step. <laughs> right back, says okay. Anderson having a great game so far today. We got a foul there on number 11, Hopper. That's his fourth, isn't it? Yeah, that's his fourth. So he's probably, well, there's only six minutes left. Maybe set him for a minute or two and let him get a quick breath. And yeah. Put him back out there. Nice block by Hodges. Up ahead to Wieskamp who loses it. He's a little behind him. Yep, just a little bit behind him. You know, one thing that this team seems to be doing better and better at is timing their blocks. You know, Michael Henderson's had a couple in the last couple games. We had Ben Craig there. Good foul there. I like that foul. You know, none of them are huge guys. Right. I mean, they're not small. No. But... They're learning how to time those. And that helps a ton. Second one up and good. Makes it a 50 to 48 game with a little bit over five minutes left. Great nice. pump fake. Great pump fake. Great pass in underneath by Lopez. Get him to pull up towards him just that little bit. Opened up the space. Got it down to Henderson. The pump fake block caused the foul. 100% caused the foul. Yep. Make him pay here, Henderson. So team fouls are 6-6. Six to six. Nice. Got the roll there. Second one, a lot better look to tie the game at 50. Every possession is really important right now. You really got to get a defensive stand here. No easy threes here. Good what, pump what, you, what you can't do is you can't have a silly foul. Yep. Because you're at the point where the next foul is three one teams one. In, in the one on one. Nice. Nice look by Henderson. Great look underneath the Hodges. Really good look. And that's because Michael's been shooting the ball, yep. making his shots. They had to respect that he would take that shot from out there. And as soon as he got the defender up in the air, he got it right down underneath for the hoop and into the basket. Three from the corner, rebound Hodges, and then he loses it. And then Henderson gets it. <laughs> Great job by Henderson. Oh, and he went to go up and lost it. A little bit over four minutes left. Muskie's got a two-point lead. And these guys don't look tired. I don't know no. about Matt them, but my goodness, it seems like they're running faster now than they were this, at the first half. A lot of momentum. They got a two-point lead. I don't know what happened there. So it's tied up at 52. You know, one thing that you talk about is you're teaching kids defenses. You can't take a second off. No. If you take a second off, you will get burnt, and that's exactly what happened there.
Henderson. We're down to seven seconds left on the shot clock. We've got to get a shot off. Inside the Cray! Oh, Great goodness. give and go. Great work there. I'm speechless. That was just phenomenal work. Oh. <laughs> I am literally wow. biting my nails, folks. Cray. Yeah. Way to go get the oh, ball, Henderson. You got numbers for a quick second. Oh, travel. Yeah. He didn't quite get the full jump set. So we're down by one, 55-54, with just under three minutes left. Both teams have six fouls. And, you know, the unfortunate thing at the moment is the possession arrow is on the north, uh, down the north side. So the first jump ball at this point is still going to go to north. Timeout called before. We got an injured player on the ground as well. Lopez got hit in the head. Looks like he, I'm not sure if he got popped up or pulled up pretty quick there, but he is back on his feet. We did get the timeout, so it should still be our ball. Now here, are you thinking three? You thinking two? Score fast, get multiples. I would say, I would say, just get two here, get a defensive stop. You know, I don't know that we need a three right now unless it's like a wide open three, and it's you know Wieskamp or Henderson shooting it maybe. Um, we do have Hopper back in there. He, he could shoot a three if he gets a good look. But I would lean more towards the two. I would agree. You know, I mean, try to just get the bucket, and we can't afford to be empty right now. Well, that, you, that's the biggest thing. You know, I, I do like the idea of going for two here, get the ball underneath, because you've got a lot better chance of drawing a foul. Correct. And we can make our free throws. We do lose the possession there. That's 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 tough. We got to get it back here. You know, if we push the shot clock all the way out here, there's only four possessions left in this game. Yeah. So. Ooh, almost got it there, bud. Long three. Oh wow. Wow. And there is not much you can do about that. I I would let him take that shot nine out of ten times. And. I mean, that was a long three. Oh, we got a foul there by number two. So that'll be a one and one situation, correct? Absolutely. So going to the line will be Hodges for one and one. Quick programming note, folks. Since this last minute 35 is probably going to take it a little bit, we are going to push back all programming on PCTV. Okay. To make sure that we can stay here with the game. That's perfect. I mean, we always do that, but I've always wanted to say it. Right. Hodges does make the first one. I'm going to get greedy here, miss it, and get the rebound. <laughs> I'll take the point in defense. Nothing but net there. Beautiful shot. I mean, you've still got time. You can still just play hard. Right. What do we got here? Timeout by Davenport North. We'll take a quick break and be right back. 
We know Rivo as expert plumbers, but did you know Rivo can also be your one source for complete bathroom and kitchen remodels? With professional craftsmen doing the job for more than 30 years, experienced in tile, carpentry, and of course plumbing, Rivo can transform a dreary basement into an elegant bathroom and upgrade a worn out kitchen using inspirational design and quality brands. Before you stand in line at a big box store, call Rivo Incorporated and see how a hometown professional can refresh and improve your home. Okay, Toby, we're back. We've got a minute 28 left. The Muskies are down by four, 60-56. Need a stop. I mean, we, we have to have a stop right here. Absolutely. And, you know, North has done a tremendous job from way beyond the line. Uh huh. You, you've got to play them out there. Yeah, you, you have you, to. You can't, with the way they've been shooting, you can't give them any shot. So, you know, from here, it's just got to be tough defense. You know, at some point, you're going to have to start thinking about fouling. Right. But, you know. Maybe not quite yet. No, not quite yet, I would agree. Um, but we're, you're starting to get to that point where the possessions matter. You know, the, the, the time on the clock is right. going to dictate what you can do. I mean, I suppose technically it always does. Right. We got a charge. Nice. These boys do a tremendous job of getting their feet back. What do we got? I'm not sure what we have going on. Substitution. That's number four on number two, so they're going to sit him with a minute 17 left. Not quite sure what happened there because he wasn't. Yeah, he wasn't set. Oh, they called timeout. They called call a timeout time to get him in. Yep, and, and okay, I understand that now. We'll keep it right here, folks. Yeah, definitely. Don't don't leave the TV now. Yeah, because we're or down to your phone a, or your tablet or your computer or whatever, whatever you're, watching, you're watching on. Yes, totally. So we're down to a minute 17, 60 to 56. We have the ball. I'll take two more points right now. You have to, because you know here's the thing. You had 35 and 35, so you're at a minute 10. If you can get it off in seven seconds and get two points in, that's your best case scenario. Right. Because even if they milk the clock, you're still going to get a full possession. But the last thing you want to do is get it down, you know, where you're taking 40 seconds here, and you're not going to have right. any time after their possession. So Correct. So you've definitely still got to get this thing up and moving. But if it was a charge. Did they put some time back on the clock there? A minute 20 left. I thought it was a charge. Shouldn't we be... So the three-quarter press here by Davenport North. Henderson for three. Ooh, off the front of the rim. Rebound Hodges. Great. Back over to Henderson. Hodges inside. Gets the points to fall. Now it's just got to be good hard defense, yep. guys. Keep your feet moving. Another timeout called by Davenport North. Toby, did you get a chance to look and see how the North Wildcats shoot free throws? Um, no, I did not. Because I would imagine, obviously, they're going to have their shooters on the court. Right. Well, you know what? No matter how this turns out, I'll tell you this. This has been a fun night. Yes. And, Watching and the girls and the boys. boys and, and the cake auction. Oh, my goodness. It's been a great night. It's good night. to be musky, folks. And we're down to, like I said, 51 seconds here. Muskie's down by two. 
And, and, you know, this is what we've talked about game in, game out. They're putting themselves in a position to have the opportunity to win. Exactly. And, you know, yeah, would you rather be up by two right now? Of course you would. Of course. Of course you would rather be up by two. But this is a team that's pulled this off before. Number two back in the game. Working the clock down here. And Cray picks up a foul. So we're down to 35 seconds left. Now, you know, here's the thing. Depending on what happens here at the line, you know, you've got some decisions to make if you're Coach Torelli. Right. You've got 35.7 seconds on the clock, so you've got a full possession there. Do you come down? You know, if you make some one, do you try and get the three off right away? If you make some both? He does get the first one to fall. So now I think you've almost got to get a three up right away. Yeah, you almost have to now. You're kind well, of. Well, I mean, geez, do you just try and go to the, go for the tie, hold it, make the shot to push it into overtime? Mm -hmm. I mean, or, or is this go get two points, let them get the ball in, give them a foul, and see what happens at the line for them? Get in there. Okay, timeout, Muskies. We're down by one with 21 seconds left here. I like it. I like it. I, again, you know, geez, you couldn't write a better script to the end of this game. I, I, it's a great game. I mean, an absolute great game. Well, I mean, again, I suppose the Muskies could be out by one instead. Right, of exactly. But, I mean, fighting hard, back and forth game. We need to get a turnover right here. How long do you think you give before you foul? Depending on who has the ball, I guess. <laughs> oh, well. I mean, number number three, uh, Coney, Cone just missed his uh, second half of the one-on-one. Second half of the one-on-one, so. Yeah, I don't know, folks, he might why, be in his head. Why did they put 2-2-2 two, two, two back up on the clock? I'm not sure, folks. Uh, that's, yeah. I don't know if I want them. I mean. I don't know if that was a timeout timer that they accidentally put back up on the clock. Or they definitely need to fix that. Yeah, we were at two, what was it, 27 seconds? Uh, yeah, 24? it was like 20, 21 or 27. I can't remember for sure. This is where I wish I had a buzzer. Yep. Oh, uh, Roger Bates, somebody noticed it, I think. Yeah, they, the Davenport North fans noticed it. There we go. There were 22 seconds left. That's why I thought it was 21.9 or something like that. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not quite sure what happened there. So. It'll be Davenport North 20, ball. 22.2. 22. 22. So we're up to 22 seconds now. 22.2. That's two tenths. Got to pick up a foul here. That's the guy I think you want. That is going to the line now will be Mosier. And Mosier is the second, third leading scorer as of right now. He hasn't shot the ball much lately. And the student section is doing your job. I don't even know if you guys can hear me over this. Yeah. First one does get the roll. You know, here's the thing. That's okay. That doesn't yep. really change the game that no, much. No, it doesn't. I mean, it changes it from a win to a tie with a two. Right. But it, it doesn't change the fact that a two still gets you in a good position. Exactly. The second one all good. Okay, now that definitely changes what you have to do. Yep. You know, and I'm sure they're all going to be thinking we're looking at Wies Camp, but I mean, you've got several guys out there on the court that can take and make the shot. But somebody's got to do it. Somebody's got to get the three-point shot off. And we end the game there on... 
really good defense by Davenport North, not allowing us to get that shot off, I guess. Um, great game, though. Boy, that's going to be a tough one. Yep. I mean, it was a great game. Gosh, they played hard. Yeah, they did. And they played well. Yes. They played well. It's not like they did anything wrong. Nope. They did what they needed to to win. And uh, definitely did a lot of good things tonight. You know, they they played very well, very good. Um, they're growing each game. They're getting better. And, you know, and I like that. Great, and, great effort. And, and again, Carter Randall and Star stands right in front of my camera. Oh, there, there he goes. There, Hi, Carter there, Randall. Carter. Hey, Carter Dillon. Yeah, it's all good. It's <laughs> all good. Yeah. But uh, once again, great game by the Muskies tonight. Just couldn't quite pull the victory out. They'll hear about it all tomorrow. Oh, at the yeah. Tournament. But, uh, but, man, jeez. I just, just wish you could at least get that shot up. Right. I mean, it, it, that's probably what's going to hurt them the most, you know, as they think about this game going forward is more that they weren't able to get the shot up when they knew they had to. Mm -hmm. uh, and, it, you know, and that's the, that's the drawback of it, I guess, is they just couldn't quite get the shot off. And... It, you feel for them, but it's it's tough. It's really tough on them. And, you know, here's the thing. These are the 50, you know, you talk about 50-50 balls. You talk about 50-50 games. Right. And you talk about 50-50 seasons, right? Yep. And you get the balls, you can get the games, and then you get the seasons, right? Exactly. And they're there on all of them. You know, a couple things go a different way. Right. And all of a sudden, this game looks a lot different. A couple bounces a season goes a little differently. Right. And but that's about building a program, right? right. And that's exactly. what that's what we're doing. And you can see it because it's it's a couple of a couple of plays every game. You're right. And the kids are getting close. They're there. You just gotta get the ball to bounce your way. Right. And and it'll come. It, it will come. And once again, like you said, that the program side of it is definitely on the up and coming. Um, you know, they got a, a really good sophomore group and then another group behind that. So, you know, the program is, is definitely going in the right direction. Well, folks, it's been a great night here at MHS Fieldhouse. We watched the girls play their hearts out. It was a tough game against a really great down the yeah. team. We watched the Muskie Boosters race over 25 grand in just the live auction. Um, I haven't gotten official numbers yet, but that doesn't even count the silent auction, which is usually good for quite a bit more. Right. So, great night you know, all the way around. Capped it off with the boys with a heartbreaking loss, but, but they'll be able to take a lot of good from it. Exactly. You know, and, and you know that they're gonna they're gonna hurt on this one for a little while, but also you watch the way they play. It wouldn't surprise me if by Tuesday, it's not even in their minds. Right. They know what's next. Exactly. And they know what they've got to do. Sounds like a great plan, you know, hopefully going forward and, and building off of this game because they did a lot of really good things right. So, Well, for Toby Lehman, this is Chris Anderson. Thank you for watching us all night on the Discover Musketeen Sports Network. We'll see you next week and enjoy the rest of your weekend.